Sorry, a little technical difficulties with all the computers and everything here, but we got it going. Thank you for coming for the select board meeting on May 15th, 2019. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, we will jump right into the consent agenda. Uh, minutes from January 23rd, 2019 and February 6th, 2019. We have several warrants, PR1944, PR1945, AP1945, AP1945-S, AP1946-S. We have a change order for the Hockenham Cemetery. We have a sewer impact fee agreement. Actually, we don't have that. We, we don't have that. The Prince have asked for more time. Okay. Uh, we have a June 18th election warrant. Uh, we have Shade Tree Committee appointment, Brandy Phil. Got the back of my head. And we have a one day liquor license, all alcohol for WGBY Asparagus Festival, June 1st, 2019. <laughs> Um, and that, yeah, that's the consent agenda right now. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve. Um, see, as we're removing the sewer impact fee, removing that. All those in favor? Okay, second. Aye. Oh, we need a second. Oh, I need a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rushing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 With the exception of the trade shade tree committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Was there anything about the asparagus festival we needed to? We were. Go that over? is. That's only on the consent agenda. Looks like right. Yeah, it so is on later for new business. I How about she is here? Which How we could her? just do that now, and then do public comment after that. So there's uh, just one one thing about the uh, asparagus festival all alcoholic uh, license they originally applied for and received and paid for uh, malt and wine, so they're asking that the fee for the all-alcoholic be the increment between the two licenses. So that which is amounts to about ten, fifteen dollars I think, something like that. Yeah, ten dollars. Yeah. Second. All yes. those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and just before we move off of the consent agenda, um, as a follow-up to a previous week's consent agenda, um, the library um, was putting on a um, fundraiser and we went ahead and approved that. However, I believe Sue? Susan, yeah. Susan, okay. Um, Ms. Here? Yeah. So I just wanted to remind everyone that it's happening. Um, it's uh, Friday the 24th um, from 7 to 9. We're going to be serving um, various interesting um, beers from Valley Malt. As, um, it's giving that to us. And, uh, <laughs> oh, same thing. No, no, they're fabulous. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, are they right here? I, I don't own one of oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's I'm okay. not yeah, the person that's okay. who arranged that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm looking no, forward you. to yeah. that part. And it's tasty food, and um, it's only $20, uh, so I hope people will, will come to it. Okay. Helping and to I believe our library. There's also a re request from the library. Um, in the past, when the Council on Aging has had fundraisers, we've waived the uh, license fee. And so I believe um, the library, not knowing that we already had approved it, was coming forward to ask if we would do the same thing for them as they're a, really a town function. So mm -hmm. I would make a motion that we do that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so what's the date again, Susan? May 24th, Friday, 7 p.m. Be there. $20. $20. Got it. Hey, John, where can we get oh, tickets? Oh, 80s trivia. Uh, well, you can get them right here. Or you can just go right across the street to the um, library where um, they would be happy to um, sell you any number of tickets. Oh, up to 50. <laughs> are we not on? I guess YouTube's not working, so I don't know if you. John, are we not on? Are we on? Oh yeah, we're on. Oh, okay. We're on. So I'm on. Text TV thing is not working. TV. Both are working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else to say about the asparagus? Because we're oh yeah, we can we can move into the asparagus. Oh, I thought we were done. Oh, we did the library, but we can do the asparagus too. Oh, okay. We we had that on here. 
I, yeah. Uh, I don't know what you want to tell us about it, or are you well, I just to want to thank everyone for the careful work this year to help us um, push this event in the right direction. Um, it's a, these are pro we've had some problems of success, and we're addressing them. Um, I want to thank Mitch. Thank you very much for your work on putting together the plan. Um, and uh, we had an earlier meeting with uh, public health and public safety and fire, and they gave us some great suggestions. 95% uh, of them, which have been incorporated into the new plan. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone for their work and to uh, helping us guide us uh, to make this even a more successful event. Thank you. We'll all hope for sunshine. Thank That's you. right. Yeah. Much, much sunshine. sunshine. And I you need that meeting, but right. And it, it's on what day is the June first, Saturday, June first. And it starts at ten a.m. Ten a.m. Ten to six p.m. And uh, there's a. a Lunch. There's a luncheon that takes place on a different part of the common, which Valley Malt will not be part of this yeah, year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I believe that you you have other things to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a it's a really fun event. It's free and open to the public. We hope people will make free will donations. Um, but um, there's a great lineup of bands, courtesy of Signature Sounds again, starting with Children's Entertainment at noon, and then starting at two o'clock, we've got. Oshima brother, uh, Oshima, we've got uh, Samira Evans and Joe Belmont, which is a little more jazz, a little more New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then we'll close out with the Gibson brothers, who are a really well-known um, uh, organization. Um, lots of fun activities happen at the festival all day, so we hope you'll come out and join us. Great. Great. Thank you. And extra parking is where? Hopkins Academy, although, oh. yes. Somewhere. Jane, you had a question? Yeah, I just have a comment. As a, as a Hadley resident, last year, I know the police were doing their best to control the people crossing Route 9, yes. but it really blocked up traffic all the way back to the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that they've focused on doing something about that. Shall I let you speak to that? Or, or? Yeah, I can comment on that very briefly. Um, we have a traffic management plan filed with the state. <clears throat> and our plan with regards to the parking is the parking will be on the north side of the common and part of our plan is essentially to divide the two lanes in each direction basically the westbound lane towards Northampton there'll be advanced warning signs uh, asking those going to these various festivals to be in the right lane and those going through traffic in the left lane and then opposite in the eastbound lanes mm -hmm. so hopefully we get all the asparagus festival bound traffic closer to the north side of the road so that way our officers will be able to direct traffic easier the through traffic will just be able to go right by uh, we will also have a detour marked if people aren't going to the asparagus festival and they want to go around we'll have that marked as well mm -hmm. to be road basically mm -hmm. correct yeah. okay. we also have additional officers to work this out because with the state um, they have some there's companies out there that can do your your safe roads projects and set it all up for you for a significant cost Whereas we know the protocols for that, we can work with Chris on making sure everything's set up, get the barricades that we need, but we need extra hands to do that. Well, so and I, I think part of the issue last year, too, is is the timing. I mean, general rule of thumb, a pedestrian wants to cross, traffic gets stopped, the pedestrians go across. Um, are you considering maybe big e type big e style where they are kind of, they load up and then yes yeah. correct our officers will not be just stopping four lanes of route nine for one, for one office yeah. for, for one person to cross right. i mean i appreciated it last year mm -hmm. but <laughs> i'm sure yeah. i'm sure That's they didn't why they that way <laughs> <laughs> no but it was it was just noticeable and again that's normally what one would do yeah. but i think that's part of the backup yeah, no yeah. more special privileges yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's select that board t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Any other issues or she, she should talk about my understanding is is that Marie is all set with all of the other departments in town. We just have to have one last meeting with her with public safety uh, and the fire chief to finalize that um, his ops plan for emergency management. Okay. And Chris, yeah. you're all set too. You're all set yes. too, Chris Ferguson. Yes. yes. I know we met uh, when Thursday? This week, yes. Uh, oh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Will there be a EMS team kind of station there? I know that. I think the, the, uh, the fire chief was trying to work that out with action to see if he was going to have an ambulance on site or just have them prepared to respond. Okay. Uh, okay. They're, they're not that far away. It's going to be, yeah, well, we have two different directions, yeah. too. So. 
One what, what of the suggestions that came last year was that it felt a little too tight, this festival space, um, and that people needed a place to sit down. So we've sort of reduced the number of market vendors. We've opened up, stretched out the middle of the festival and put in a 60-foot pavilion so people can hang out in the shade and be quiet. Um, so to do that, we took the restaurants and beer out of the one tent um, um, and lined them up in a section by the stage where they are now just without the tent piece, which um, number one also takes care of a problem we had with how do we control how many people are actually in a tent for the capacity in the tent. So I think we've made some changes that will make it a better experience for the attendees. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we've got a big tent, a 60 foot tent now for people to just sit and hang out. So, so we hope that'll help. Great, all right. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you all for your help and support. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Uh, I just, now that we've concluded that, I can open it up for public comments. If there's anyone here for public comments, it doesn't look like there is anybody here tonight. So, <coughs> let's see. Um, why don't we look at the uh, Rocky Hill Road traffic? enforcement since we have hearings but they're not until for another half hour or so so we do the uh, Rocky Hill Road traffic enforcement chief do you want to yeah um, so just really quickly uh, I, I haven't actually I, I didn't actually um, hear firsthand obviously um, some of the complaints that were registered at a couple of meetings ago I believe it was mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't in attendance but um, obviously, the board did their due diligence and passed it along to me. And we, um, we, I just wanted to I could kind of express um, the fact that we do take these things seriously. Uh, and Mitch and I put together just a couple of. Um, we, we thought it would make a little bit of sense, not specifically to just address the Rocky Hill Road complaints, but also how we handle these types of complaints all over town. Uh, we get them all the time. It's not just speeding. It's sometimes it's uh, you know people making illegal turns and and things like that. So obviously, as everybody knows, traffic is a huge issue here in Hadley you know, with Route Nine running through, and then unfortunately, all of these side roads that people use as cut-throughs to go through to the college and things like that. The amount of activity that occurs on some of these roads rivals Route Nine. Um, so. I kind of just wanted to address a couple of those issues and make sure that people understand that these things aren't going unheeded. They're not, we're not ignoring them. Um, they're driven by a couple of different factors on how we handle them. Uh, some of the things that, that uh, affects us doing traffic is uh, staffing, call volume, um, other requests for traffic to be done in, in other areas, uh, and one of the things that uh, Molly can attest to that we were recently looking at was in uh, trying to find interns from UMass uh, to, to bring some of these folks in to use some of their skills to um, do some data collection for us. Uh, we are, we've been working on traffic control projects off and on for quite some time. We find that some work and some don't. In a minute, Mitchell kind of go over a couple of the things that we, ironically enough, were, were working on when uh, we were asked to come here uh, today. But uh, generally speaking, specifically with Rocky Hill Road, uh, these are not new complaints for us. We have heard these before and we have increased our activity uh, on that road. And I'll just let Mitch just quickly go over a couple of those, a couple of the items that he was able to, uh, to find before we came here today. No one here will be surprised to know that the place that we get the most traffic complaints is Route 9. There isn't a day that goes by where someone is not calling in an erratic operator, a road rage, road, road rage incident, or something along those lines. But with regards to our town roads, I went back to the beginning of the year to today. Rocky Hill Road receives by far the most attention than any other street in the town of Hadley. And so I pulled uh, statistics and did some counts. Rocky Hill Road, since the beginning of the year, there's been 135 traffic stops on, on Rocky Hill Road. 82 on Bay Road, 
41 on Hockenham Road and uh, in the 40s on River Drive. So on when you compare those streets, most of those streets are bigger streets than Rocky Hill Road. So I think in comparison, um, Rocky Hill Road does get its does get its more than fair share of attention with regards to our um, active traffic enforcement. Um, one of the things, if you want to look, this is actually one of the things that Mitch was working on for us to um, give to our patrols. Um, it's just, a, this is basically a traffic enforcement. It's a whiteboard, everything can be erased and we shift. The idea was that we're gonna shift streets around for specific enforcement. Um, the general hope is that we can get our officers to do traffic enforcement on these roads as we go through the weeks of the year. We'll erase them, we'll change them, we'll do a different street and they'll do you know an hour or two's worth of traffic enforcement if possible on their shift. Um, Mitch was explaining to me earlier about uh, active and passive. I don't know if you want to go sure. over that really quick. Um, so traffic enforcement, you know, the main goal is for voluntary compliance with the traffic laws. Uh, there's not one officer on our department that enjoys going out and handing out speeding tickets. Um, so aside from seeing officers out doing traffic enforcement, we also have some other passive ways that we that we do traffic enforcement and collect data and as everybody on the board knows um, we the university has purchased for us two message boards and those message boards uh, you may see them on the side of the road right now they're in front of the elementary school and they tell you your speed they tell you the speed limit but if you see them off on the side of the road they actually sit there and collect data and we can go in and we can pull reports for you know, the times in which we're getting the fastest speeds we can pretty much pull any information we want out of these signs relative to traffic data. But the other part of it too is, uh, the, the other passive part about it is simply our cruiser fleet. We get a lot of questions about it. Why do you have this you know, paint scheme? Why do you have unmarked cruisers? It's actually part of our traffic enforcement plan. If you know, if you drive through Hadley, that we all have marked cruisers and that's the only thing we have in our fleet, well, you can pick a marked cruiser out from a mile away as you're driving down any of these roads. So our officers do drive these unmarked and semi-marked cruisers for that purpose as part of our passive um, traffic enforcement plan. And we deploy the signs as requested. Um, right now we're working on the um, school zone in front of the elementary school and I can already tell you that the message boards, both of them are booked through the rest of the summer uh, with different requests, different streets, different locations. <coughs> I was, I was going to say something about public comment, but now that you brought it up, the two signs that are at the elementary school, why do we not have permanent signs now that we can get solar signs and put school zones up there? That's, why, that's there. why they're there right now. There, we, there's no the, reason why we shouldn't do that. The, rec the requests that you got last week or two mm -hmm. weeks ago about Rocky Hill Road, about putting you know speed humps or the divots yeah. in the road and everything, <clears throat> is the same request we received multiple times about putting in front of the elementary school. In working with Chris and and, uh, and our police department and actually fire department was involved as well, I believe, and David, we met and we discussed it and obviously there are limitations and some drawbacks to putting speed humps in the roadway. They're putting them for everywhere DPW. in the universe. I understand, but the thought is, is that let's collect some data Let's do a traffic study, which is yeah. almost done now. It, it's done now. Yeah. The signs right now are programmed essentially to when school, when the, the time before school and after school gets in, it says school zone 20 miles an hour, and then when it's not, then it goes back to regular speed limit. So it switches back and forth automatically, and we'll be able to pull the data and, and see if just the signs are making a difference. And I, I know from just the first day of data that it was making a difference. So, so that's... That's what that was going to prove. Probably well, talking about up in Salisbury during the school year, they have uh, flashing lights, so it's 20 miles yep. an hour yes. from 8 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock yeah, in the morning correct. until uh, maybe 9. Mm -hmm. Then it goes off and then it goes back on again when the school's being let out. So same, both ways. Right. And it's the same thing on Old Amherst yeah. Road and Sutherland, yeah. too. They yeah. have those signs yeah. there for, yep. the, for the um, elementary school. Yep. So I would love to see that because I can tell you since the, because um, I drop off quite a few mornings. I can tell you since the speed carts went up, 
um, or the sign cards. Um, traffic has definitely slowed, but uh, it, it's typical when the SRO is parked out front there, everybody's sure. going 20. Nice. CMC yeah. leaves, everyone's going 50. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I'd love, I would love to see some of the electronic signs, especially since we can do the solar stuff now. There's really no Absolutely. reason to not have it there. Yeah. There's also a benefit to what we're doing that bleeds over onto Rocky Hill Road. If you're a commuter going through that area every morning, it's slowing you down. And it's slowing you down. Hopefully, by doing this, this will take some of the complaints that we are hearing and put those speeders, put those that are not obeying the traffic laws, and getting them off our town roads and putting them back onto the state roads. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm thinking that by doing this, when event, whenever it is that we do it, this is going to help us and it's going to pay dividends. What would it take, um, like the unit, the, the solar-powered unit they have going into Northampton, right on the bend in Route 9, in front of Bridge Street School? Mm-hmm. They have, whatever, every, when you come up to it, it's flashing, tells you what your speed mm-hmm. is, yeah. you know? You mean a permanent speed sign? Yeah. Yeah, the solar-powered. What yeah, does that yeah. cost? We have one up north. <laughs> um, David, I think you get the bill for that There's every month, don't you? Yeah, those are what we pay monthly. There's two of them. I think the folks who live in the, the yellow house on the corner there pay for one of them. Yeah. And the, the town the pays for the other. And we, I, don't, I don't know how I much it is. I thought that was no longer working. Yeah, one of them works, one of them doesn't. One but hasn't worked. They for are. Time. And what happens is if you get a, if you get a power bump, you got to go reset. Then we got to go reset it. That's oh, okay. what it is. They they are both they are both functional. Okay. So we only have a couple of guys who are trained to power bump. Do the reset. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to try to schedule that. Along those lines, uh, something digital showing your speed or, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, I've seen them. Um, I think Shootsbury actually has one. One of the hill, hill towns has one where it actually puts a frown face or a smiley face that pops up just to kind of get your attention based on your speed. You know, right. up with even with high intensity flashing yeah. lights. Even so, like on uh, yeah, South Maple Street by the bike path, you know, those two oscillating lights yeah. and two LEDs that are flashing mm-hmm. when when they cross. At the bike path, they, they catch your attention all mm-hmm. the time. You know? Right. So mm-hmm. could I make a motion to ask uh, Chris to look into the cost and what would be involved to put two of those out there, just as an investigative, you know? Yeah, oh, I'll second that. For, sure. the, for the school, the yeah. school zone school ones? School zone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Possibly there are grants or something available. That's I don't know. right, yeah. yeah. And isn't front of Hopkins still a school zone or not? In front of Hopkins, I'm nine. 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 Yep. school zone, yeah. Because that's what those two lights were originally. The one by the Legion, the one there they're was. They're supposed to be putting it back up when they're finished with the correct construction. Construction. They're supposed to put those back up again. Wasn't there something though that they wouldn't lower, wouldn't allow a drastically decreased school zone speed limit there, or the something under nine? I want to say. Yeah, I want to say. I do remember something like that when we were. Um, Quite some time ago, when we were talking about the speeds on Route Nine, where you can put the sign time. saying "school zone," but you couldn't make couldn't it actually slow down. down. Yeah, right. couldn't mm-hmm. actually drop the speed. <laughs> yeah. Aside from speed humps Open and door, signage, you know, electronic signage, are there any other mitigations that can be done on um, for the school zone? Rocky Hill no, situation? just in general on any street, East Street, Rocky Hill. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. North where we are, pick your since poison. since since the last. Since uh, we were asked to come to the meeting, uh, I put out a, a new directive for uh, officers to, um, on day and eve shifts, to hit Rocky Hill Road at least for an hour every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and call we've actually, call well, obviously, yeah, with, with depending on what's, what's sure. going on. Yeah. Um, and we've actually already gotten a couple of different emails from folks I forwarded to David thanking us for the extra efforts because they're seeing it out there. So, absolutely. We, we're. I'm certainly not, there's, in, I'm in no way, shape, or form saying that we're doing absolutely the best job that we can, uh, or, or certainly not saying that we are going to solve everyone's complaints. It's no, not I'm, I'm talking about other, you know, public service Outside announcements, of, um, yeah. getting on Hadley Media, yeah. just anything educational in nature, that, that type of thing, above and beyond having a physical officer I presence, for, which is expensive. It's the transits. It's not the Hadley it's, people. It's people that mm-hmm. work in Amherst. Well, work some, in of, some of the Hadley people. Well, so well, and that's one of the other things I was yeah, going to bring up. Sometimes I go a mile or two. Some, of, yeah. some <laughs> of the other roads yeah. that we also have, you know, I, I just I listed just quickly. The ones that I can think of that I've had folks call me about 
and I have like eight or nine of them here. Mm -hmm. Town roads, obviously, and like you were saying, John, a lot of the people that we're stopping on these roads are Hadley yeah, folks on the way to, yeah. on the way to work or on their way home from work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and certain and depends on the road. I mean, some of these roads are real quiet streets, um, but and I don't blame anyone for complaining. I mean, especially when there's kids playing in the yard and things I mean, like just that. And E Street, you don't really have on that mm -hmm. map, right? But in front of the station, in front of my house, and I know they've been there before because you have complaints by the neighbors. I see E Street hi highlighted yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, it is? It's <laughs> <a> <laughs> funny, he there's might, a huge police he station. Just for John. <laughs> just for John. Just for John. <laughs> just for John. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised the speeds we get by the police station. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, in the, the, with some of the speeds that the, um, that the speed boards have recorded, a lot of times uh, one of the capabilities it has is to um, take a snapshot of high-speed cars mm -hmm. so it'll pick the highest speed car out of there um, we had 76 miles an hour I think was by the elementary school, by the elementary by the school. Elementary school? Yeah. Wow. so and one of the you know and, and sometimes it's difficult to tell because when the radar picks up the speed it'll snap the photo so there could be three or four cars in front of it that it, yeah. that car is catching up to so you know it's it's not close enough that you can actually see a license plate or anything like that, but I would be surprised. Time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you'd be surprised. Um, some of the some of the areas that people fly by, our mm -hmm. station is is absolutely one of them. It's just. Well, and I know we've always been reluctant uh, to consider speed humps. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's been something that I know other towns have, have done it, but anytime it's come up in conversation at any select board meeting I've ever witnessed, it was a flat no. There's no way we're doing it. Um, is that anything now that we have another new DPW director <coughs> that, there <he> goes. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't have to be tonight, but maybe something to think about. And I'm thinking more about the, the quieter streets that mm -hmm. still get an awful lot of cut through. Well, that's, that's I think that's another one of those items that I don't see any issue with sitting down and looking at and discussing outside of those things that you named earlier, the mm -hmm. lights and the traffic enforcement and things mm -hmm. like that. But it absolutely has to involve everybody because you're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, we were, one of the things that came up in front of the elementary school was temporary speed. Was it humps or well, the, the temporary the speed temporary humps. ones. Those are rough. Oh, Just yeah. during school. Oh, yeah. Just during school. But the then the, the concern when we were discussing with Chris is that well, what happens if it snows, you don't get them out in time. Yeah. You know, now you're breaking plows and mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of other stuff. So there's a whole or they're lot scaring of to have to put them, put take them up or put them down. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, speed humps on something like Rocky Hill Road might not, you know, one or two thrown in reasonable spots might not be too bad. Whereas <coughs> River Drive, you throw them in there and you're kind of affecting response time to all of Correct. the northern half of town. Of yeah. But on on the, the quieter streets absolutely like newton yeah. lane and some yeah. of those places even, where even a street like north lane you get a lot of commuter yeah. traffic that comes up west street to north lane yeah. Yeah. yeah and if you did something like that on north lane you yeah, have very nice quiet street for the most yeah. part you're going to be affecting a lot of traffic that's making its way up onto west rocky street. hill yeah. North lane yeah. and back and forth and and the neighbors on west street call too I people mean, on west street oh. have complained to me and it's like people they, race they take a left on the on east yeah. side yeah. and yeah. drag race yeah. the past people on the west other. side yeah. you know it's like yeah. right and you, you can add get in to that corner first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can add in um, that you know that no left turn from Route Nine onto onto Cross Path and Cemetery that yeah. they used to get to West Street right. so they can get to that corner. I still do see people taking uh, left there all, all the time. Yep. time. I stopped being on my way to that comment. Too. So I've been through other towns where they have put an out of com a non-used police vehicle just parked it. Is that something that might work? Florida actually has, um, I've seen Florida, are they state patrol or state police? I'm not sure what they call them, but they actually have gigantic cardboard cutouts of their cruisers, <laughs> and they put them in the median on the highway. But they also have, like, dummy, I mean, not, no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, blow up the police officers in the car. In the car, so it's not an empty car. It's just sitting there with a... Looks like the to a driver. Yeah. Somebody's in it. Well, I've so seen that. that actually, you know, that actually has come up. We have used, we have actually used that idea not for traffic control, but we've used it in situations where, um, you know, businesses or, uh, I think um, one of the, the most recent time we used it was with our mosque. Uh, when they're concerned about vandalism or concerned mm -hmm. about some type of violence, mm -hmm. uh, we have parked a, you know, 
mm -hmm. an unused cruiser in there and fluctuated that with actual human beings there just so there's no yep. so the randomness of it yeah so we haven't actually used that for traffic control but um, we have we have employed that method in the past I think the day and age of social media would would very quickly uh, render that fairly ineffective you, you know with apps you ever seen the Waze app? The Waze no, app and things like that. Every day, you all day. You flag the yeah. cops all the time when <laughs> you're laying down your way out of town. Yeah. With things like that, with those kind of applications and with social media, I think that while I think that, that those did have their place in time, it, it may, we, we don't necessarily have just spare equipment sitting around, but I think that um, when you see a car sitting on the side of the road and there's no officer in there, I think that very quickly the word gets out. Yeah. How about what? fake potholes? Like some sort of optical <laughs> illusion so it looks like there's or a pothole? Well, we have seen there, there was a <laughs> yeah, 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 3D uh, the crosswalk. Yeah, right, the 3D right, crosswalk. That's the same idea. Yeah, 3D potholes. Yeah. Absolutely. 3D potholes. <laughs> All right, is there anything else you want to touch on? We don't need 3D potholes. Stop it, John. Any other comments or questions or motion? Actually, we did have a motion and a second for looking at traffic signs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, any other discussion on that issue? For the school zone. For the school zone. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other motions or anything we want to discuss at this point? The only thing that I would I would request and suggest, since, since we're talking about Rocky Hill Road and, and doing our due diligence on our end to try to ease some of the complaints, is um, I guess I would ask, I would defer to you know, DPW as, as well as public safety. Um, do we want to talk about putting a committee together or a group to discuss the next step or phases as far as signs or speed humps or something on Rocky Hill itself? Um, or do we want to <coughs> continue as we are? Chris, how far you want to go with that? Yeah, Mr. Chima, we, we We've changed the signs on Rocky Hill Road to 30 miles an hour. The board approved that a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the whole road now yes. is 30? 30 miles, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. What about doing a, um, maybe a, put a, we'll have to put a time limit on it, I'm sure, but a public, public hearing. Forum. Yeah, yeah, public forum on the speed issue and let people bring some ideas and kind of get an idea of the hot spots, so to speak, where the complaints exist. And then, based on that, we can do a committee or something along those lines. Just you know, I think uh, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, to solve the, to to minimize speed, uh, I think my view, the board might need to um, spend some money. I also might need to look at updating the regulations. A couple of uh, cities where we have issues like this both in the Commonwealth and also in um, Rhode Island. Um, we have uh, the speed camera, speed, and the fine is very s hefty fines. And so Rocky Hill, East, uh, East, East Street, and a couple of other locations, um, that will help the police because the camera takes a picture of the vehicle, mm -hmm. yourself, the speed, it, it, they stamped it, and it sends it to um, in this case, the chief may decide to take gets to the police. We don't need a police officer at various locations, and the fines are very hefty fines. It's the and state the of Maryland can, does it, and the board can really also can. institute that. That money goes to right. manage <laughs> that uh, <laughs> you know that know. particular project. Mm -hmm. um, it will go with with, with uh, social media. It will go wide quickly, either to students or to those involved. Is a very expensive fine, two hundred, four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, you hardly can take yourself out of the picture because you get the speed, the, the vehicle, the individual is all they stamped. So this it's not a matter of it was I wasn't the NDP, I wasn't there, or <laughs> I didn't see the police officer, or the officer just guessed how my speed. So mm -hmm. that would be a very big deterrent. Yeah. In a place like Rocky Hill. <laughs> I think that would be controversial. <laughs> yeah, but you, everything, think, yeah. everything that the board does is only controversial. But yeah. Yeah, it's a decision making. Uh, you also find that um, yeah. you also find that, that may require us to look at our local ordinance as traffic commissioners. I'm sure the chief may want to say something about this. 
uh, the fine is serious. And so when, if the board decides to go that, or that route, we give a couple of uh, notice, a couple of warnings, and then it triggers, you will find that the, the reduce, speed will be reduced quickly. Mm -hmm. Can we, um, I don't know, maybe we have this on the books already, but um, you know, many towns have a, a town-wide speed limit unless otherwise posted. Do we have that? We have some traffic, we have some municipal bylaws relative to traffic. But they all, almost all of them mirror the Mass General Law. Okay. And some of the, uh, all of the traffic bylaws are what we would probably classify as antiquated. Mm -hmm. And the fines are like $2 for the first offense, $5 for a second offense. So the putting the effort into updating these kinds of bylaws, um, when we already have mass general laws in place, I think that uh, you know the town would have to make a decision if it's worth the effort to do. Yeah. What was, what's the end game? What was your thought on that? The reason I'm asking is because uh, you know for the towns that have that and they post a, a sign at basically every main road going mm -hmm. into into town saying unless otherwise posted, uh, it, it kind of makes your enforcement efforts easier and also your uh, appearances in court where people are contesting your citations easier. Um, and that way it cuts down on the, well I didn't know there was nothing posted, okay. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't, just didn't know if we had that in, in town. So. I know New York State has a state speed limit of 55. Yeah. Yeah. With regards to the, the, the effort with regards to Rocky Hill Road and changing the whole road to 30 miles an hour, the hope was that it would, it, and it, it obviously uh, accomplishes the mission because the speed limit is now consistent, but when the speed limit before was 35 and 35 and 30 and 35 and 40, along you know about two and a half miles that makes it problematic and that was part of the pitch to the state to get them to do the same thing with route nine and i think that you're certainly right in that sense that uh making a consistent speed limit to some extent somehow some way would be beneficial mm -hmm. right well i i'm in favor of having some sort of public forum and and i i think everything should be on the table you know again you now chris is bringing up something that is done many, many other places. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about cameraing the whole town. No, right. We're talking about isolated, yes. high problem areas. And my fear is, and I think it's the fear that everybody has, I mean, how, how many times has everybody around this table almost been hit by somebody that was flying, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it's gonna be a dog, maybe it's gonna be somebody's four-year-old <coughs> child that runs into a street grabbing a ball, and that's our worst nightmare, so. I don't think we need a public forum on. I mean, this is the police doing their job. Well, I well, think the reason yeah, David what's, brought what's up. The, what's the forum for? Bring, bring to get something public input. To us so they can right. see. There is public. Well, you can do it. Plenty of public input already. I think that I think the goal of however you want to do it, whether it be send emails into the board or have a public forum, the goal would be to um, try to identify and isolate the problem areas and bring mm -hmm. suggestions from the public as to what they want. That was kind of the first step that we were discussing mm -hmm. for in front of the elementary school where if we were going to take that step and really discuss speed humps in the roadway, you know, this is the town's road, this is the town people's road. They get to decide what they want on their road. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, getting the ideas however you want to do it is a, is a fine idea. I have no issue with that. Um, if you want to, um, you know, see how the uniform speed limit and some added traffic enforcement goes, uh, and then, you know, we can report to you and see if we still have the same amount of issues, um, we can do it that way also. I just, um, I didn't want to leave the folks who, who had the issue kind of swinging. Hanging, but I don't. I don't think you have. I think you. I think you've done your due diligence in doing the patrols and being out there, and certainly people are noticing that more. And a little um, more research is probably necessary as mm -hmm. far as the speed camera goes. I was not 100 percent sure it's legal in Massachusetts because we have. Um, there has been uh, case law that has come down as it relates to um, uh, uh, drug testing. And uh, you can't cross, ex specifically stated by the justice, you can't cross-examine a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
um, yeah, they've started to disappear from a lot of states because of case law like that. I don't. I actually don't know of anywhere. Where that was that was my like that. next question. How accurate are those two signs for for the highest speeders for writing tickets? Oh, the speed boards. Oh, we wouldn't be able to use those. Really mm -hmm. no. It would have to be no, sp if, if it's watch. even legal. The, I guarantee you that the ones that they use are high tech stuff. Yeah. Not, not that. Are there any other traffic studies we could be doing or looking at to, in, you know, to encourage putting in a speed bump in a certain part of <coughs> town or something along those lines? Um, I don't know. We've talked with like Pioneer Valley Planning possibly yeah. to do something with them for a traffic study. I don't know if that would. I know that help. UMass uh, UMass has contracted folks and possibly even used the state before to do some traffic studies on on Route Nine, determine influx of students and things like that. Um, I don't think it was for any of our purposes. It was some for something for them. Um, and I don't know if we if they got any numbers, say, from Rocky Hill Road and West Street and all the roads that everybody uses to get in. If they did, we may have access to something like that. But as far as doing a study like that, mm -hmm. I think we would have to. So you're, have you're, to you're concentrating yeah. your yeah. effort. Yeah. If you take any road that goes from Northampton to Amherst back and forth, if people can't get one way, they go the other way. Mm -hmm. So traffic on Bay Road, South Maple Street. Um, now you shut off Moody Bridge, so that's a godsend. I do see people trying to go through the fields and get down there still, but then they have to end up turning around and come back. Um, but you know, those are the high-powered traffic areas of anybody trying to get from a to B, A to B. We are the center. Mm -hmm. So they will try to go down Cemetery Road, they make that U-turn, they go down and up over, even though they're not supposed to. We see them doing that all the time. Um, very few people go this way. It is allowable to go down Cemetery Road when you're coming down Route 9 and coming back, but they don't do that in the morning. So they like to take that little U-turn there. So that's... Well, so what's the action item, I guess, coming yeah, out of so the conversation? I guess it's it's the board's pleasure. I guess I probably spoke out of school and kind of jumped ahead. I, I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted um, I wanted you to you to understand that we are we are going to double our efforts um, and uh, continue to you know with the like I said with the uniform speed limit on Rocky Hill Road. Our hope is that utilization of the traffic signs as well as uh, extra traffic enforcement um, will will help to decrease the speed specifically on that road and we will do what we always do which is bounce around to all the other roads where we get speeding complaints on as they come. But um, you're going to have different numbers now. Now that the colleges are graduating, mm -hmm. your numbers aren't going to be the same now as they will be back up in September sure, again. So sure. yeah. there's actually like two different studies that need to be yeah. done when they're in and when they're out of town. Well we won't. Yeah. Well, we're not we, know we, won't even, we don't even really necessarily need to collect data. No. Our, our CAD system will do that for us. It's, it's, you know, when the officer calls in a traffic stop, it goes into the CAD. Um, so we'll do our job as we, as we do. And like I said, we'll redouble our efforts uh, in those problem areas. And when you want another set of numbers, I will be happy to provide that and, and uh, we can see how it looks. Does a police department do traffic up UMass? Where they could have some of those studies maybe on file that we could look at, or you could look at. What do you mean, do traffic? You mean enforce traffic laws? No, on the, the traffic studies for for cars at different times, so you know, uh, like just like we said, we're, we're we know the college is out for the summer, so right. But what like, oh, do you mean? Does the UMass Police Department yeah. do the traffic? I'm not sure. I, because I, we've got I the count, we've got people. the counts for Route Nine. I mean, right. they've counted Route Nine. Hundred times. Yeah. You know, the so problem is, is that you know, drive into Hadley at, or out of Hadley at nine, you know rush hour in the morning or rush hour in the evening, and they're not all on the night. Yeah. I think that's part of the frustration that's of some the, of these yeah. folks, especially on Rocky Hill Road, because mm -hmm. it's a we've got big city traffic in a small town. There you go. So could it I ask so like that you include? DPW in the conversation, yes, like maybe you guys get together and have a meeting yes, where you just sit down and focus on that map. And again, you may have ideas from some other municipalities you've worked with, what could be done. So I'm all in favor of, of large inanimate objects where appropriate, you know. So if it's something that's going to physically slow somebody down, yeah. then as long as it's well marked. Yeah. 
I, I think that we're all sitting here talking about traffic, and, uh, and we've mentioned Rocky Hill, and, and uh, we're appreciative for the board's action in, in doing the consistent speed limit along Rocky Hill Road. And I think uh, maybe not maybe not necessarily this evening, but I think that the, uh, another town road that we should uh, consider doing this very same thing would be along Bay Road. Mm -hmm. Bay Road, the speed limit is all there's like the seven road. different speed yeah. zones on Bay Road, yeah. which that again makes traffic enforcement very difficult. So 45, 40, 35, 30, 25. <laughs> I maybe. know it all. <laughs> right. Yeah. So but before the 45, there's a 35 mm -hmm. approaching an intersection. Right. So it's 35, 45. Well, I come up off of backside yeah. and I hit the 40. It's the last one you hit. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it 15 yeah. the whole way for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it seems like our biggest actions are looking into putting up permanent signs at the school, we've reduced the speed limit on Rocky Hill, and seeing if those combined efforts change any of your statistics that you have collected to date. I mean, that seems like our biggest action. Is there anything else we want to make a motion for, or additional studies? Reducing the speed on that Bay Road. I don't know if we want to tackle that right this minute, maybe in well, future let's date. See, let's see what we can do with what we have right now. We can yeah. bring that issue back to you at a future okay. date. Yeah. And have it on an agenda oh, so you're prepared for it. Two months time. Yeah. Two months time. Or or is it better, you know, November when schools are probably, back in and that kind of thing because the sense. summer is going to be slow you know yep. slows down but we're also you know we're, as we go into the summertime we're also sending uh, two officers to the academy over the summer so we're going to have reduced staffing as well as kind of the perfect timing reduced staffing reduced hopefully reduced traffic mm -hmm. um, so yeah it might make more sense to stretch it a little further can you train okay. more than two officers on how to reset the we can't <laughs> speed <out. laughs> we can't mm -hmm. Does the DPW know how to reset them? I don't know. Chris, can you look into that? Yes. Yeah, the, the signs up in North Hadley uh -huh. for the okay. speed limits to see who has the knowledge. Does it necessarily have to be the police department resetting those? I don't even know how it ended. Um, had, somebody must have put up before I. We have the keys. Okay. It's too bad it doesn't know reset it automatically at like 3 in the morning. <laughs> I was told one day, hey, you got to go, go reset the sign. And I was, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up just because we have a 715 hearing. But thank you very much for coming and uh, discussing it with us. Okay. Uh, right now, we have a hearing for change of beneficial interest at the Texas Roadhouse. I don't know if anyone is here from Texas Roadhouse. Typically, in these situations where there's a change at the corporate headquarters that affects the liquor license of a chain that has multiple town locations, uh, uh, nobody comes in. The ABCC tries to do this in one um, one uh, hearing. Uh, so the paperwork is in order. This is a change at the corporate uh, level. Uh, this is routine in nature. It's been approved by the ABCC in, in advance. My recommendation is to grant the change. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we have a few minutes between hearings. Ginger, I don't, were you here for the Hockenham Cemetery? Is that? No. no? I'm here to support Friends of Lake Warner. I'm here. We don't have Friends of Lake Warner. We don't have you guys on the. No. Um, David, you said you were going to put me on the agenda. So if I didn't do that, I'm sorry. Um, we can take this as an item of business that we did not anticipate. We can do that. Our public comments. What's the deal? What's, just can uh, you explain we, we it? We want to put about? A, a public kiosk up at the boat ramp, at the public boat ramp. So we, we received uh, an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. So we received our wetland approval, but it's on town land. I put this forward to David, and he said the best way to come would be to bring you a proposal and tell you what we were up to, and then I have to go to the building inspector and get the building inspector. So I have, I have a little handout. Isn't there a little one there with uh, some yeah, there's a now. small there's a small one there that a volunteer yeah. put up, but we are looking for something a little bit more significant. So I apologize for dropping okay. the ball on this. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you.
So my only question is on this, is it going to narrow the available space for boats to get down there to launch? It is not. Will it be like uh, where the boat ramp is or kind of across the street where the parking is? No, it's actually where the boat ramp is. Yeah, there's a grassy it. space in between. On the second page, there's, okay. a, there's a diagram yeah. showing the parking area and the, the oh, okay, yeah. and the kiosk. It'll so be kind of right up against the bridge more or less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. And 720, okay. Can we do the paving? How long is that presentation? How long do you? make it pretty fast, but just a couple slides. Yeah, so we can do that. On the yeah, 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 we can squeeze it in. Well, this is starting up. Um, my name is Victor Vega. I work for a beta group. We're a full engineering firm. We work all across New England. Uh, we did a pavement management study here um, back last summer um, with Marlo, and now we're working with Chris, um, giving you the data. So just a little intro of what pavement management is. Um, so it's basically the practice of planning a pavement maintenance and maximizing the value and life of your roadway network. Um, so basically the model for that is performing the right repair at the right time. So here we have a little graphic just showing on the left the condition of a roadway and in the bottom you could see the life in years. So you got the 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So when you first pave a roadway it starts excellent condition then slowly drops off and then it gets to a point around 10 to 20 years where it just drastically falls off. And that's where your costs are really gonna go up. So basically what you wanna do over time is, before it makes it to that point, you kinda wanna do preventative maintenance. Um, and I'm gonna go over what some of those um, treatments are gonna be. But basically, you're gonna be spending less money over time if you're maintaining your good roadways then waiting for them to drop off. So you're looking at just looking at spending a little bit and then spending a lot. So anywhere from $4 a square yard to maybe $30, $40 a square yard by letting it fall off. Um, so here are the different types of treatments that we can do. So things as far as maintenance are for your good road. So that goes with your crack sealing, um, fog sealing, pothole and utility patching. Um, then there's your surface treatments, which um, you got your chip seals, your microsurfacing, and your overlays. Then you got structural repairs for your really bad roads where you got a mill and overlay, reclaim, or reconstruct. So just going over the, what we did here in this town, um, we basically have a five-step process for every payment management town. Um, what we took was your road center line file from MassDOT to know what roads the town accepts based on what DOT says, because that's a big input in your chapter 90. Um, then we went and talked with the DPW director, and he gave us feedback to make sure that we know what roads you're taking care of, so then Mass DOT knows what roads you're taking care of, because sometimes there's discrepancies, and that goes into your chapter 90 funding. Um, then after that, we did a field inspection. I'm going to go a little over that later on. And then we did an existing condition summary based on all the input that we got. Um, then these last two in green are basically an ongoing program. So what happens is once we finish, we present you guys the data, and then you start doing your capital improvement planning for the year. And once you implement that plan at the end of the year, you go and you maintain the program that is sitting at the DPW's desktop. Um, so here we're looking at your roadway profile. So based off mass DOT, um, you have around 66 miles of accepted roadways, um, 1.82 of unaccepted, one mile of private, which comes to a total of 6950. Um, we only inspected um, roads that were paved, so we didn't do the gravel roads in town, so that's why there's a little difference between that bottom number and the top. 
Um, so the program that the town has, it's at no extra cost to the town. It's non-proprietary. It's just a Microsoft Access database. So basically the town, if they have access, which they do, they use this program to maintain everything. Um, it's very simple, very user-friendly, and it provides the town with all kinds of analysis, all the conditions that we collected, um, and all of that. So basically this is the inspection program. So what happens is we went out and we drove every single roadway that's accepted by the town. Um, we split that up between segments and it's usually intersection to intersection because when you go and you actually pave these roads, that's basically how you're gonna go about it. You're not gonna stop in someone's random driveway except for long stretches. Um, so basically what happens is the inspector is doing a windshield inspection, which means he's driving the road and he's finding out what um, the stresses are on the road, what severity and what percentage of the road. And once that's all collected, then it shoots out that number, which is your RSR, road surface rating. Um, along with that, we also collect your line striping, your um, type of curb, and your sidewalk information. Any questions so far? So the RSR is per location? Yes, right. so per segment. One street, one RSR. Exactly. Okay. So for instance, um, Cross Path Road from Russell to Cemetery Road is mm -hmm. 77. And I'll mm -hmm. go over what the numbers actually mean. So basically, a zero is your worst roadway, a hundred is your best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very simple number. Now once we do that it's gonna put it into a repair category depending on what score it gets. So starting at the top if it's in great condition there's no maintenance required no cost to the town. Then you should go to the next step which is your routine maintenance which is the stuff you kind of want to get ahead on which costs you about 50 cents a square yard. Then you go to your preventative maintenance which includes a chip seal, micro, and that's about $6 a square yard. Then you start getting into the heavier work, your melon overlay at 14, and then your major rehab at $40 a square yard. Now, as far as these prices, this is just curb to curb. So this, I know you guys don't really have a lot of sidewalks, but that doesn't include stuff like drainage, um, any line striping that you gotta do again, any curbing and sidewalk work. So here's um, where the town stands. So right now, you guys are 80.78 out of 100. What does that mean? You're in very good standing compared to many towns. So over all the towns that we work with, an average is about 60 to 65. Um, so you guys are in pretty good standing. As you can see, you really don't have a lot of roads in that minor rehab, major rehab category, which means that you're not spending the heavier dollar, but you're doing a good job of maintaining your good roads. Now, just to show you a couple of examples, Northside Road, I believe, was the worst road in your town. It's an 18. It services, I think, it was three houses, if I remember correctly. Um, and then it's kind of hard to see Mount Warner Road, but you can see a little bit of the cracking in there in the middle of the road. That's around 69. Um, then you get a little better in Stockbridge Section 2, like 78. Um, you'll probably need a little bit of crack seal, maybe a new surface. And then River Drive, 94. So what does that all mean? So basically, after we did everything, every single road was put into a category and a price was created for it. Um, so overall, your backlog is 4.2 million. Now, the question we always get is, if I spend 4.2 million today, is that gonna get you to 100? Not necessarily because some of the treatments like your routine maintenance doesn't fix completely the road. It just stops stuff like cracks from getting any bigger um, or causing more alligator cracking, which is gonna bring you more potholes. Um, so basically that's just your whole breakdown. Very simple and again, this is curb to curb improvements. Um, so now this is that other step where you start making your plan. So in the program itself, there's a built-in cost-benefit value report. What that does, it takes the cost that the program suggested along with traffic counts, um, 
and along with the service that it provides to the town. And it gives it a score. The higher the score, the more you should put into that road. Now it's not necessarily gonna bring up um, that mill road because it doesn't service that many people. But maybe something like Rocky Hill, I don't know the score off the top of my head, gets a lot of traffic, it's probably gonna be higher on the list just because more people use it. And this basically just goes through different repairs over the different times, very similar to the other. So this is a little chart that we create based on how the town is doing. Strictly most towns only use their chapter 90, and that's not always enough. We always find that you need at least double that to maintain your roadway, and then above that to get you to a higher score. So basically what this takes into consideration, if you only use your chapter 90, you're gonna slowly fall down the curve. But maybe if you go to 475, you're gonna maintain. And then if you increase that, you're basically gonna go up. So over time, you always wanna put money into your roadway network. And the town has done a great job of using stuff like preventative maintenance. You guys have a lot of chip seal, which is good because it's beneficial for your cost and your bottom line. Um, so if the town continues to do that, it's gonna dip very small compared to other towns using their chapter 90. We should always consider maybe for providing a little bit of local funding for that. And then basically the last step that the town's gonna do is system maintenance. So every time a road's completed, they can go in, go into the program, update the program with the roads that were done that year, and it update all the reports and all of that. Um, you're gonna reassess how much you're spending every year. So you can actually change the cost in the program and it's gonna change your backlog depending on any bids that you get back, depending on what price you're getting from that. And then if there's any roads that you need to add that the town takes over and stuff like that, or any roads that were newly created, you can also add that in the program. That's it. Any questions? Were there any roads that we uh, are able to put in Chapter 90 that aren't in Chapter 90 right now? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. We do have a report. Um, I can get that to you. Um, and we can help you with the paperwork. We do it for many towns. Um, it's just, they changed it a little bit now. It's Before it was all paper. Now you actually have to go online and choose it on a map. Um, but we have all that available. We can I can have that sent over to you guys. The good news is our Chapter 90 money is right about at that level as far as maintaining this year because we have the yeah. extra money bridge money and stuff. So yeah. uh, we worked out in our favor this year. So. Yeah. 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 Point. Point well taken. Yeah. 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 No, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah. You guys. You guys are in a good standing, and I find that for some reason the Western Mass towns with less money are doing a lot better than the city, <laughs> and it's it's all on how you use stuff but then again you can do chip seal out here over there you got a lot of people crying the yeah. demon road oh my god yeah, yeah. Uh, i hate that road every morning yeah. the patches just made it worse they, they did they did they did, yeah. they did a poor yeah. job i don't think they used chapter 90 money in northampton <laughs> any other questions you guys have no, thank yeah. you for your thank you yeah thank you very much for coming and giving us that report no, no problem thank you okay now we have a public hearing scheduled for water and sewer rates. <coughs> I don't know if you want to take over that <laughs> on water and sewer. Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we, we came before the board uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and the board uh, set up today for uh, sewer rates and water rates. What we're asking as uh, a department is that the board should uh, consider um, using the current the current uh, program that was set up on how to how we can get to where we need to be currently our sewer is bleeding we don't have money and uh, we have a lot of 
capital projects that we would like to do. Also today, throughout today, from 9 a.m. to about 3 p.m., I was with uh, e EPA and EEP. They came in to do inspection of our sewer system. And uh, Mr. Chairman, they, they also, they have a lot of issues, which again, is timing because it came at the same time that the board is looking at this. We have, we are understaffed. We also have a major capital improvement and they also want to see a five year plan concerning collection, uh, maintenance, and also um, the I&I, &I, and also, so those things that we've already talked about, and this is money. So they will be sending us a report, as long as we get a report, I will forward it to, to the board. Uh, but we, um, the good news is that they, we, concerning, concerning the age of our plant, they are very pleased with what we do. Considering the staff we have, they are very pleased, other than the fact that we don't have enough staffing to meet the demand. They are very concerned about that. And so they are thinking that uh, the minimum should be five. Right now we have three. And um, so a year or two ago, Mr. Chairman, there was a study made Concerning considering the um, the rate, and and it came about that we were told if we go a couple of years, fifteen percent, and it's, it would give, bring us to a point where we will be get out of freight in a couple of years. But if we do nothing, uh, we are bound to put ourselves more in red. And then considering the EPA and the EP comments of today. I don't want us to get to a point where the external forces will force the board to impose to, uh, uh, or bring in a consent agreement with the town and that would require a lot of money at a very short amount of time. So at this point we are still in a better situation where uh, the board will take a look at this seriously. We also uh, look at the fact that for this cycle we've missed two and payment cycle. So even if the board gives us 15% tonight, it's still, for the fiscal year, it's still gonna be, we're not gonna be in that same level that we're supposed to be in if we had it. Uh, so so we, the town, in terms of the sewer, is also in a very bad shape. In terms of the um, water, Mr. Chairman, we're not asking for 15%, we're asking for 5%. In part because water still has, uh, couple of reserves, but that reserve is not enough for our capital projects. The reason why water is a little bit different from sewer is because of the number of users. So it gives the water division a, a little bit uh, leg, legs up. Um, currently our pipes in town, that aging pipes, so we on a three to five year plan, we, we need to begin to change the pipes. We have our valves, also age, aging valves, we need to begin to, they, begin, they are failing more often than usual right now. And also, we also want to bring it to a point where we can isolate a smaller area. Now, right now where we have a larger area when the issue breaks up. In terms of staffing, uh, EPA did not come in for water today. But if they are coming for water, they will also have the same comment in terms of staffing because we also don't have enough staffing to to run the primary and also the, the, the system. What's our current water rate and what are you asking to raise it to? Our current water rate, let me, let me get the, the, I just didn't see it in there. I have the material we had last time. We we got got it, I got it. Here. We're estimating an annual increase of 27.85. Uh, that would be for the current year. Okay. That would be the annual estimate for the, if we, if we get it 5%. Yeah, but what's, 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 what's we have the actual rate? We have a various uh, rates. Residential, which is the minimal, is 252. And uh, it goes to, it goes to five, 
543. So 252 to 543. Yes. Well, that's a 5% increase in water. That, that's the current uh, rate per 100 cubic feet. Now, our recommendation, our recommendation for 5%, it goes from 252 to 265. And then um, we go from 386 to, five, uh, to 405. In the sewer? And in the water. Water, water we have water. Three, three tiers. Oh, okay. okay. The, the last one is the residential conservation, which is 543. We're recommending that to go to 570. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I will forward it. I don't know if you don't have it. I will forward it to the, to the board. Yeah, we didn't get a copy of that presentation. Yeah. So. We, have, we have it. If you go to the yes. meeting from May 1st. Yes. Oh, it was in a different it's meeting. It's in okay. board docs yes. back okay. there. On the commercial commercial side, we have um, yeah, okay. we're, we're we're asking that it goes from 487 to 511. Also, the baseline commercial 504. We're recommending we're asking that it goes to 529 from 504. And then we ask that the, the top line, which is 543, goes to 570. We're also asking for second meter irrigation. Currently, we charge 543. We would like to take that to 570. The agricultural municipal rate, which is 552, we also would like that to go to 565. Uh, I'm sorry, 252. We would like that to go to 265. Okay. Yeah. So the total annual, annual increase comes to 27.85. For water. Yeah. Um, well, do we do we want to make a motion on the water and kind of yeah, separate I'll, out the two? I'll make a motion that we approve the water increase of five percent. I have a second. I'll second for discussion. Okay. Well, it's second for discussion. I, uh, Go ahead. I know we need to get there, but we just raised rates last year, and uh, at this point, I'm not in favor of raising the rates. Um, just speaking about water right now, uh, I know we've got uh, many years to make up for, but uh, hitting people on a fixed income uh, year after year is uh, a little much. What? Really? Uh, I was just going to ask, in your plan, uh, after, are we planning for and I should pull up the other document. Are we planning for a rate increase again next year in your plan right now? For water? For water, yeah. For water, no, but for sewer, yes. Sewer's going every year. Yes. So for water, if we raise 5% now, we're going to keep it there for a while at that rate yes, and the will, models work out. Yes, it will give us uh, funds for our current capital projects, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my concern about delaying it is this is how we got here in the first place, you know, and again, I'm totally in agreement with the folks on fixed income and the like, but um, a lot of folks in that category may not be the highest water rate users either in terms of, you know, cubic feet running through their properties and the like. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do understand the issue of those who are fixed income. income. I, I, would, I would recommend that the board, uh, instead of that process, if there will be a way the board can come up with a program whereby those who are either distressed or certain criteria, they could have, they could have applied for the board for some sort of abatement or some or relief. Payment plan. Yes. Yeah, so that the board. This way, the board can have a, a schedule. We also give the board some some data to look at who are those in distress, uh, who can. So it might be elderly people, it might be veterans, it might be some some category that the board may decide to do. This way, the board the, we still can increase the rates to meet the need of the utility, and also the board can also have mercy on those who may need some grace or some for lack of better word. 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm not in favor of increasing rates either um, in the spirit of things because we've just been hit really hard this year with the three projects that we're, we're doing right now. Um, it may not be water projects, but it's other projects and it's another tax. Um, I don't know about throwing out there about doing a two and a half percent instead of a five percent and two and a half next year. Uh, if we weren't going to do one next year, you know, cut it in half this year. I really don't feel I want people to feel any more hardship because we did get some scuttle on the projects that we have now in place. And, yeah. you know, I think uh, we need to take a step back a little bit and not be increasing every time we turn around. And this board needs to reassess our capital plans for our infrastructure, yeah. first of all. That's mm -hmm. job number one. Mm -hmm. And if we could take that out of capital, out of taxation, and not raise the sewer rates and the water rates, we can pay for all these improvements that we need. Yeah, I think not tax everybody to death like you've been doing it for the past six years. Well, in the, the so first of all, it's, uh, it's we. Got a question. <laughs> okay, it's we. No, you. We. I said it correctly. You. <laughs> but to your point, I agree with you on the sewer side. I think we've, and we mentioned this last meeting, I think we seriously need to look about how the sewer is being handled. I mean, handled. even even minimal, they're, they're directionally flushing now the correct way. If they need a valve program and we need, as we do with the uh, filters for the treatment plant, put $10,000 a year on the side for installation of valves. I, I mean, this is all stuff that's been ignored along with the rates. And I think there's other ways to get this out of capital somehow without raising the rates anymore. We have a question in the back here. Yeah, I think I'd be more in favor of the rates going up if I knew there was a plan it, it you know, in front of us that we knew that we're going to start replacing pipes, valves, whatever we need. Slee line and the sewer and lines like we've started. And the other thing that Chris had mentioned is the fact that a good portion of the town is on water. So you have the, you know, everybody inputting here. So everybody's affected by it. It's going to be a different story with the, the sewer when we talk about it. But, um, but for right now, I, you know, let's get a plan together so we know exactly what we need to charge so that we're not getting every year the rate has to go up because oh yeah we didn't get enough people we don't have enough for the that project you know this you have to plan ahead isn't that the whole point of the tie-in bond study we I, know, I don't know anything about the study it, so so th what we're looking at so is what, actually at the end what are these rates being based on right now the study that tie and bond did um, for us back when marlo was here and we had them come in and evaluate i'm trying to go back to the so there was a whole presentation two years ago now? It was a year ago. Last year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and well, they came in and they talked about all of it, the infrastructure, what was needed on an ongoing. So, the, so there is a plan year. behind this. This. Is, this was only a rate study. The capital plan for the sewer hasn't been updated since 2008. I don't know when the last time was that the capital plan for the water was updated. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we've, we've addressed a few of the issues, like I said, with the filters, what they cost after 10 years, their life expectancy. That's the kind of plan that we need to do. So what's, what's, the, what, what's the 5% represent in dollars projected? What, how much additional revenue will that be across the board? Is that $200,000? Is that $50,000? Do you know that number offhand? It's being no, compounded every time you raise the rates also. I'm just thinking for yeah. capital needs. Yeah. What's I don't have that, you know, that number okay. effect because like, even if even if we want to give the board a number, we've, we've um, missed two cycles already. Mm -hmm. So the number will not be accurate, but I can, I can get that number for the board. Please. And yeah. So the, the, the challenge, and I, in your defense, I know you're just trying to you know, do what you have to do and raise the money to do that because we're in this position that we're in. But from a taxpayer and resident perspective, it everyone's seeing a constant increase every single year across the board, whether it's from taxes, whether it's from water and sewer rates, because we just raised them last year. So that's why uh, I'm not in favor of raising them this year. I think people need a break. And if we need to raise them in the future, okay, maybe we can come back next year. But the, the feedback I'm getting from residents is they're getting hit from every direction with increased rates. And so I understand what you're asking for, and I know that we need to fix it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> but so, but so it is true that the, yeah. 
that it is uh, where is it? we are coming to the board to ask for money. Right. It's yeah. very painful. But I must ask also, Mr. Chairman, that if the board decide not to do anything right now, uh, my view is that when the next we come, next time we come to the board, it to triple the problem. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I I don't understand that uh, going forward. Uh, hopefully we will we will not be in the position where we are now because the Sorry. issue. Well, we, this difficult time is again because of uh, a lot of capital projects has not been done. Even at the selectman says, two, two, 15, 18 years, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. we, no, it has, been, it has been done. We right? have uh, a program right now where uh, we, the board has given us money, 30,000 every year, mm -hmm. yes, since last year. We are beginning to do, um, and that was very helpful when the EPA came today. We begin to do uh, the, the all the systems. We begin to check check all the systems, clean the system up, begin to catalog where we have problems, and uh, how to repair the problems, so that uh, it gives this the system more life. We also have that same issue with water, but we are not even doing that of water right now. What we are doing with water is uh, we are waiting for them to be a problem, mm -hmm. like the break that happens. But we 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 know that we have these problems. Just as the gentleman said we should we have we have we can we can present to the board the capital project. It's just that we don't have the money to begin them. Mm -hmm. Um time and board has done some of those uh, for us. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're asking the board to uh, give us some money. Even if the board doesn't give us money next year, we can have money to begin the project that we may come to the board maybe every every other year or every two years. Mm -hmm. But I, but we need to begin something. And I, you know, I'd be in favor of, of Joyce offered it as a mid-range. If we didn't do the five percent, if we do two and a half, and then two and a half commitment to next year, but the reality is, and, and I, you know, we're all rate payers up here, so everybody gets it, um, and we all get the complaints about people not wanting to spend the money, and they're getting hit from all sides. No, not wanting to Hang spend on. the money, they can't spend. The some money. some people can't, and. I go to Chris's point, if people are, have true hardships, we should have a way to deal with that. But the problem that we have in town is we have a limited number of users. The, the users on these systems are, just take water, yes. are constricted in part because of our zoning bylaws. So we, we either need to find a way to get more users into the system, and that has to do with you know, what we're going to allow for building and the like, and nobody has wanted to touch that one with a 10-foot pole. Everything's just getting more expensive. And the reason that we're having all of these rate increases coming in front of us now is because we didn't do anything about it in years past for the exact same words. I can go back to every single select board meeting and listen to this conversation for the past 15 or 20 years. We can't do it now. We just hit the taxpayers. They're upset. I'm getting phone calls. We have people that can't afford it. Look what we've done. We had to build three brand new buildings because we didn't do anything about our buildings for decades. So a small incremental cost to not allow water to become part of the next problem, I'm all in favor of. I'm sorry. I know people are going to be angry with me. I'll be paying my bill too but let's at least keep the one thing that's almost working right now on track. I, I, we're I, in a pickle with sewer. So, yeah. so I think we're sticking to water at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're sticking to water right now. And, and I agree with you too. I mean, uh, I feel like we need to do something we don't want to get behind on water. It is an increase, but what <coughs> happens is if we have to shut the water off, DEP shuts us down, all these different things could happen. and. If we don't take that take action now, we're going to be in that situation, or be looking at a fifteen percent increase in water rates in two years because we didn't do a five percent increase. At now, the same and time, we had some other major failure in sewer, and we're having to ask the taxpayers to emergency fund that. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be sitting at town meeting having a discussion that's even harder to present to taxpayers. Just a quick question, so. The increase that we're going to get now, is that going towards a specific project or is this to kind of get a kitty going so that we have some money available in case something does happen? We have water lines that need to be relined. But is that something we're planning on doing with this, this new funding? What, this is what we would like okay. to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
we, it's worked well on the ones, and John can attest to that, the ones that we've done so far with the relining. Um, well, the sewer lines get relined, relined. because they really so updated their, the their systems. The water lines have to be replaced, replaced yeah. because of the tuberculation in them. But we, and, and the Chris, we've done a lot of the things on that list since 2008. The uh, master uh, plan, uh, capital plan, has not been updated to, since 2008. Yeah. So that needs to be updated, and we need to address that in capital with the infrastructure. Just like I said, it's very simple, but we've been ignoring it because of the lack of knowledge of some of us on the boards. And, you know, it, it just, it's never been brought up to this point. And I think there's other ways to do it than raising the rates. Very the, simply. The, the other way that can be done <coughs> will be if this, if this board moves it to tax, but that also may require the public input because this utility is an enterprise. So by the way it's set up, where the, the users are supposed to be the major involved in <coughs> setting up capital. But if the town wants to take it outside, it can be done, which I think the board discussed with us last last point okay. meeting yeah. and then so okay um john i forget can you vote on this or are you uh, yeah. you are a voter okay um molly did you have something else to you can vote on the water these rates? are rates yes. the rates you can uh, not rates. capital no capital i can and we're only vote the capital we're voting to put in front of the taxpayers most of the time Mm -hmm. We're not voting it to accept it. We're voting it to put it in front of tax players, and that I can vote for. Okay. So I want to amend my motion mm -hmm. to okay. authorize a water rate increase. Can we only do it for one year, or can we do it prospectively? Um, the rate would be the rate. Right, but, yeah, but the idea rate. would be to do two and a half this year and then two and a half next year. No, but we would have to re-vote it yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, so you'd have to aff affirm the, the, the increase next year. Right, okay. So I make a motion that we, we cut this increase in half at this time um, and authorize a 2.5% increase and encourage the board to give serious consideration to doing the other 25 next fiscal year. I'll second that. Okay, any other discussion on that? I'll just say that that's, you know, essentially a cost of living increase. I mean, that's, you know, 2%, 2.5%. So, so any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No. Okay. And now... Uh, <laughs> Two and a half percent we voted for the water. Um, and now sewer. Um, does anybody want to make a motion on sewer? Well, what I'd like to hear is um, what, if, if we don't vote the proposed sewer increase, what the opinions are in terms of how we're going to get out of this. Yeah, and the big question for me on sewer is how how are we, what plan are we putting together to get us out of this hole? Because I feel like we're in a pretty big hole, um, whether that's a pun or not. Um, but, you know, I mean, do we have to look at other alternatives at this point? So just, just by way of background, and if you turn to the um, long range trend analysis for sewer and you go through the slides, every different way that you measure sewer um, you see a picture of revenues are declining and expenses are increasing and we're in a situation where if we don't do something we're going to have trouble operating sewer for the next year f fiscal year or two let alone the capital stuff that's coming up that we know that we need to address so and we have the DEP did an inspection today and we haven't received a report from them yet no. on what actions might need to be taken. 
Mm -hmm. Probably won't get that for a couple months. So I do think we need to give serious consideration to uh, looking to general taxation for at least some portion of the, the sewer infrastructure. I, mean, I don't know what that looks like, but I would love to see what a plan might look like in that regard to, to pull. Two ways that you can do that. Yep. Um, you can take the existing sewer debt um, and transfer it over to the tax rate. Um, we've only, to my knowledge, we've only done that once, and that was when we took half of the Callahan water treatment plant debt service and transferred that over to the tax rate. So you have half, half of the debt service being um, underwritten by taxes and the other half be by water. Um, you can do that for the sewer. Do we know what the sewer debt is, debt burden is right now? Um, I remember when we did that for, the, for that one. Yeah, hold on one second, it's right here. That was quite a while ago. Yeah. 25 years ago. No. 20 yeah, years ago. The other way, no. This when I came on board, so probably oh, 2003. Time. Or can we do it prospectively and yeah, say yeah, any new sewer debt? All right, so you have, about oh, it's upgraded, okay. you have about $135,000 per year. Okay. The new filtration system was correct. For how long do it? Um, for another, let's see, that was a 20 year loan, so I think we have another uh, somewhere between seven and 10 years to go on that one. It was 2004, wasn't it? Uh, I came in 2005, and you had made that decision in FY 2006. When was the treatment plant built? That's when we did it. No. It was around 2007 for that. The treatment plant came off, and the two pump stations went on. Didn't they? No. Mm -hmm. So you've got $135,000 roughly in sewer debt service right now that you could transfer over to the tax rate. And um, that, what would that look like? That would be what, you know, we just did those percentages for town meeting. Yeah, so. Um, that $100,000 for this, the ditch repair was roughly, was it like 0.55% or something like that? It's like $4 per yeah, year or something like, like that. Somewhere, somewhere around $5. Yeah. Per, th per thousand on the average single family house. So that would that would have an impact, and the um, the other thing that you can do is and for future in, uh, sewer debt is to um, have it paid through taxation, taxation. rather than uh, sewer money. And that that according to this document, self-supporting debt service as a percentage of net operating revenues in 2018 is 13 percent. Right, which is below where you want it to be already. Right. So if, if we did that though, so if we moved the existing debt with the presumption that future debt would follow mm -hmm. to general taxation, it has a fairly, let's say, and I'd use the word nominal because I mean, every dollar counts, but I mean it's not a huge hit to the property taxes. Um, and what what would that do in terms of alleviating the request of the fifteen percent? Well, that's what I mean. It's, thir it's thirteen percent. The debt revenue or the debt service right now is thirteen percent of operating revenues. So if we wanted to. So if we eliminated up, that, we'd have thirteen percent more, more dollars mm -hmm. available. Right, but we're still we'd still have a problem. We'd still be. 2% short, you know, and that, yeah, I don't know how that math all works out. It wouldn't be a... Yeah, it wouldn't be perfect. No. And then there's the truth in advertising issue, that we sold the debt based upon the assumption that the sewer rate payers would pay for that, and this would be a shift without a town meeting vote over to the tax rate, so... We'd have to talk to the assessors and make sure that uh, we understood what it was that we're talking about. But it is an option. When do we need this vote for getting into the next round of water or sewer bills? How much time do we have on this? 
Is that something we need to do tonight? I think, I think we missed the second one. Yes. Yeah, we missed the we missed second window, one. so we have we have a little bit of a time. A little bit of a yes. window. Yeah. So when are we meeting again? I'd like to see some hard numbers. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. why. It'd be nice to run the analysis and have that in front of us next and, time. And if we can have a list of capital projects that we can address, you know, you may be able to get out of this with just capital projects, as I said. You're teaming in another how many miles of line, how many feet of line. So if we were to sleeve line that, X amount of dollars, we already got that number, what it costs to sleeve line it. I think we have to be very clear in understanding that what we're suggesting for a rate increase for sewer is to help us out with the operations. Operations. Yeah. That capital is not something that we can really, we should be thinking about, but that is. But you really took that $78,000 out of the budget, David, for the sleeve line that we've just installed. The 17, 1800 mm -hmm. feet. So that was a big hit right there for an emergency repair. That's yeah. the kind of stuff that should come out of capital every year. This is what I'm trying to say. But John, and it I would mean, leave when you say some of the operational problems. But when you say come out of capital, yeah. capital still is paid for by the taxpayer. Exactly. And if the people vote for it, then it will come out of capital. And then it won't affect the operation costs of the water and the sewer. I guess we'd have to map out though, yes, you know, do we, we do we uh, do all cap sewer capital projects come out of and not taxation, only taxation in general? And not only sewer, should we need to have the water discussion too. They're both in the same, uh, I feel they're both in the same pot here, mm -hmm. you know. So Just obvious, going up on both rates does not solve the problem. Yeah. Obviously the decision is up to the select board and we'll, we'll implement whatever decision you make. The best management practice for financial management is that whenever you have debt, um, that special revenues such as water, sewer, CPA, had, uh, Hadley Media Funds should be used first if it's for those purposes rather than general funds taxation. Mm -hmm. So that's a policy that you adopted some time ago. It is, of course, something that you may touch on and say, yes, this is the policy, but this is what we're actually going to do in, the, in this particular case. And, and this might be a time. I know um, people have been using, uh, I'm going to be a Dandrukevich tonight, because you're going to take that CPA money, we're at 3% getting matched. Would it be time to redirect that tax money over uh, to doing some of these projects instead of putting it into CPA? You could do and that. do you know? I think you know we need to look now at this side of it, where we have two million sitting in CPA money, where this is now um, coming to the forefront of what we should be focusing on right now. Yeah, and that's something we can do to keep the tax rate stable, but mm -hmm. temporarily redirect it and, yeah. mm -hmm. and kind of you know build up the the funds there, and then we can go back to CPA when CPA yeah. starts dwindling down. But I think that's... I uh, think that's something we need to look at. I as long as it doesn't idea. increase the rate, then why not? Right. And go the other thing, go. you know, we had uh, to. Uh, he, he had to comment back there. So. Yeah, um, I'm just curious how many uh, sewer users there are in town and what percentage of the population that is uh, to start. 900-ish. Yeah. yeah, out of 5,000 plus. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so, but the biggest users are along the Route 9 right. corridor. Correct. So that is my what I'm getting to. So, the sewer went in initially, um, from my understanding, is so that we could have a Route 9 to have the mm -hmm. kind of businesses that we have there. So, everybody benefits by that from that by having the lower tax rate. So I think anything that when it comes to the uh, infrastructure to support that. It should fall on the whole town through the tax rate for that reason, um, because that keeps your taxes down. I and mean, Route 9 has caused more um, need for public safety, for police and fire because of the calls we get. So it's cost us money. So everybody's paying for it. Um, but I have no problem. I'm a, a sewer user. Um, I'm on sewer only because it goes by my house. I didn't have much of a choice in that matter. Um, and I'm willing to pay more or the maintenance of it, but stuff like that, you know, especially when you have restaurants that may be contributing to the grease factor uh, with their grease traps and uh, causing problems there. Um, so 
I, I think that's something that the board should consider and not put it all on the users because there's a lot of us that, you know, we're, we're forced to pay for it and we didn't have much of a choice in the matter. But the whole town does benefit. And the whole town does benefit. And I understand, you know, we have to replace things over time and we should be planning for that, but um, just keep that in mind. Um, so could we ask, um, you know, so that we have better data to make a decision on, could we ask uh, Chris and uh, probably a treasurer, Linda Sanderson, to yeah. work with you, David, and, and the, the assessor. assessor, right, and Dan, yeah. to put your heads together and maybe come up with a couple of different scenarios then on the sewer with it all, all continuing the course that we have now and then and what taking do we need the to do to redirect the CPA tax and change that? You need to maybe. have a, a public hearing. Yeah, and, and maybe David could do further homework on that for us, too. Yeah, so that we can have a better idea of how much we can redirect and how much it would help the situation out. Yep. Chris, on uh, this sewer increase, is uh, do you have uh, the septage rate separate somewhere as a request? Yes, or we, we requested that last, uh, to the board last uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, I uh, thought the, the board, the board uh, uh, didn't make a decision except the board voted to have it. Right. So I guess we can take that separately, but that's one thing I would be in favor because we haven't increased in a decade or something yes. like that. Oh, the so septage rate. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, so you uh, recommend you recommend at 18. Yeah, I, I, Molly brought up a very good point right at the very beginning, and I, I'd really like to see that focused on in the future with regard to our zoning. I mean, if you want to get more users, we need to focus on zoning and get infill type of zoning. We have a lot of open area along these paths of zoning, but they can't be developed as one parcel only because of the way our zoning is on frontage and square footage. But a lot of towns are looking into infill type of zoning meaning that trying to fit a house in these areas where you have sewer you're not increasing the length of all this stuff but you're, you're putting it where you already have it if you get those users in there you're actually increasing the usage and not really putting a lot of tax a lot of burden on new structure you know? So it, it really needs to be looked at. I think it, yeah. you'd be, you'll be surprised what you probably can get in. You know, I'm hoping to have a meeting with the planning board in, was it July or August, David? I forget. In the next few months, and I think this is a great topic for us to bring up with them and talk about and see what we can do strategically together. So what we're together. tabling right now is the sewer rates. We yeah. are Look taking at. a vote on <coughs> doing the septage. So, is there well, a motion on the table for yeah, the septage? Or a motion on the table. How about we finish, finish up the sewer? June 19th is when we were going to do the planning. I'd say table the sewer. So, right sewer, now. we just want to table that for right now I and vote on anything do. Today. But pending the so additional that, data. So, our next meeting right now, just to keep going on this, would be June 12th. We could possibly have a meeting on May 29th no. to do something like this. You're. you're you, you wanted a, you, you want to raise the sewer rates right now, and you just raised the water rates. And just last week, we had a business come in that couldn't afford our fees. Yeah. You see what I'm saying here? Oh, yeah. The more we go up, we're not only going to have all the complaints by the citizens from the residents, but the businesses are going to start dropping out. I see it happening, and, and you're just going to create a bigger mess here. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. So, do we want to review this on June 12th, the sewer rates? Sure. Yeah. Does that sound good? Okay. So we'll delay that. Delay the sewer until June 12th. In that time, Christopher, hopefully you can have a conversation with Linda and David and, yeah. and Dan about possibly putting more burden on the tax rate tax um, and seeing what we can do there. Uh, Any other input from the board no, on that? I'm, I'm okay with that. I was just going to ask about the septage if you want to do that. Yeah, so we can move to the septage now. Yeah. Make a motion to accept the septage. 
Can I just ask, what is it now? Where do you want to go? And how long has it been since we raised it? Just so people yeah. can hear. We have 11 we cents. Were. We're thinking of yeah. where you recommend that bush should take it to 18 cents first. And what what is it right now? 11. 11. Yes. All right. And then when's the last time it was raised? You know, uh, it's uh, about 15 years ago. 15 years. 11 to 18. Yes. And what are you going to do with over a thousand gallons? The the it was 10. And then it went to 11 over a thousand gallons, I thought, or 15, 15 I'm sorry. Yes, yes. So are you going to raise that 15 or? No, we just went. It's going to stay the same? Yes. What was that? I don't know. Uh, over a thousand gallons. The, the 11 to the 18 cents uh -huh. will be for the first thousand gallons. Okay. And then after a thousand gallons, it goes to 15 cents a gallon. So before it was increased when you went over a thousand gallons and yes. now it's going to go down no go over no it's going to stay the same, stay the same. so you're going to go 18 but cents for the first thousand thousand and then you're going to stay at 15 cents over a thousand. after a thousand yeah why not make it all the same just no it's, it's a, it's a, no, there's no longer 15. you're not going no. to have the 15. no because even why not we because uh, we asked in the board to give us 18 with based on our records the 15 it was useful, but it, it wasn't making much. Uh, so 11, 11 cents were more, uh, where we have more in terms of, uh, I, I I so with, 50, with 18 cents, it, it would cover our, our cost. And also there would not be roof, uh, any need for the two tiers. I think David's got a point. If you had 18 up to the first thousand gallons and then 18 after the thousand. Yes, yeah, sing, single rate all across. Single, yes, that's well, what I'm saying. That's what he's proposing. That's what I'm proposing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, you're not talking about additional after a thousand? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. 18, no just, just 18. Just 18. Yeah. Oh, you, you're asking for more than 18 for yes. this, this second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 15 cents more, like, so it would be, well, what, 33 cents a gallon over a thousand? So 15 cents more than 18 cents? No. The first thousand. The first thousand would be one hundred and ten dollars at eleven cents. The way it figures out. Yeah. And then if it's a fifteen hundred gallon tank, your septage tank, that five hundred gallons would be at fifteen cents. Okay. So before it was an extra uh, four cents a, a, a gallon. Yeah. yeah. So I will. I make a motion that we raise the septage rates to the to eighteen cents a gallon for the first thousand gallons, and then after that we move them up to twenty five cents a gallon for the for the anything above a thousand gallons mm -hmm. and I say this as a septic septic person so <laughs> and is this right just there, for David. Hadley residents or is this for anyone we're not taking outside right we're now. not just taking any outside residents. Residents. can I just ask about the 25 is that in line with what other area towns yes area towns are, uh, are in line with what we're recommending okay yes All right. I think some other towns are like 20 uh, yes mm -hmm. so we have a motion second <coughs> okay any other discussion <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Up, up, over over 1,000, 25 cents. 25. Mm -hmm. yep. No, wait a minute. Why are you abstaining on the seps septage rate, but not the water and sewer? Because it's directly affecting that department. Water. The rates it? are general. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's a final okay. one. Okay. It okay. doesn't. Okay. Yeah, it seems he knows his line. Okay. We are late on an appointment we had for half an hour late here. So we are going to go into the dangerous dog hearing. And I'm just going to say this is a hearing to consider a vicious dog complaint. I just wanted to say one more thing and I've got to find it here. Sorry. <laughs> I had this organized earlier. Um, and just let everybody know that the select board is bound by law as to what it can impose and cannot impose any terms that are outside of the MGL, such as banishment from the town, surrender for adoption, or surrender to a rescue. Towns are often bashed following these types of hearings, okay, for, for, for having the dogs go elsewhere. Just wanted to say that. Um, anyone who will be testifying in the following dangerous dog hearing, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony to be given in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. And would uh, the animal control officer please identify himself as a physician, certifications, and report his findings to the select board? Uh, Kyle Dragon, animal control officer, is out of John Hadley, um, certified by the state, and have been in the position since 2015. Uh, this is the continuance from last week's hearing. 
uh, to, for, for further fact finding. Um, in line with last week's hearing, I did do an inspection of Mr. Galinsky's property um, to ensure that the prior order had been followed through on. Um, I found that he did have the muzzles as required and um, he was able to satisfy that the leashes were as required. Um, he does have an enclosure with proper accommodations for the dogs from Elements. Um, that's about six feet tall. Uh, it did not have a roof. I did discuss that with him that it didn't need to have a roof on the top of it. So he's going to be making those changes to it. Okay. Um, My turn or somebody else ahead of me? No rush. I, yeah. It, does any witness want to say anything at this point? Good. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Galinsky, would you please identify yourself and make a statement or ask a question with a complaint Good evening the to the board. Officer. I followed up with Mr. Hartwick after I said it would last time. I got the first report when they showed up. I saw Mr. Hartwick this Monday. He just gave me a report of the deputy dog and his attitude. I'll show you after I read it. On Thursday, April 18, 2019, approximately 0730, Detective Joel Kupel was dispatched to the area of 75 Huntington Road, her father's house, for a report of two dogs loose who had allegedly attacked another dog on her property. I responded as backup. Supervised the area and located dogs walking the driveway at 73, which is the same place. I exited my cruiser and called the dogs over me. Both dogs approached me and Detective Cookwall in a non aggressive manner. Both dogs allowed me to pet them, but were not interested in staying in the area. Both dogs proceeded to walk towards Breckenridge and eventually moved to the backyard of homes in the area on their way back to my house on the site of Breckenridge, just north of the intersection with Huntington. At this time, the owner of the dog, Ed Grunsky, arrived on the scene and called for the dogs. Both dogs ran directly to Grunsky and hopped in the vehicle. Grunsky left the scene without further incident and I cleared the string scene. I instructed Detective Kupernal to document the details of the call in their former report. The first report I showed you last week and there's no visible injuries on my dogs or her dogs. And what I'm waiting to hear from today is her vet report was supposedly swelling. And I talked to Mr. Nixon earlier this week when I paid him a $100 fine, which I agreed, no problem. And I'd like to see the report that she had, if she even has it. And I'll show you this letter here. So a dog's are really not that aggressive. When you can pet a dog and they come up to you non-violently, and that's last week's report, you already saw this, so that's already old, in old news. Are you all set? Yeah, that's it. your statement. Okay. Uh, does anyone else present have anything to add or any questions? Okay. So, um, in regards to that, I did speak with Detective Kupion, uh, as he was the one that assessed the dog at the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, he states he did a visual assessment of the dog um, from several feet. He did not do an on hand assessment of the dog um, to view if there's any damage underneath or not. In light of that, I do have a statement from that was written and signed by the vet to evaluate the dog post incident. What does that So I examined Casey on 418 2019 at the South Deerfield Veterinarian Clinic after she was attacked and pinned down by two stray pit bull terriers. She was lucky to survive the attack and suffered only minor injuries. There were no lacerations that were present on her body. She was very sensitive on the medial Stifle of the left rear leg. No punctures were noted, but bruising was evident. She showed only a minor lip, uh, one to five out of one to five. I understand that this is not the first altercation the neighbor's pets have experienced. If you have any questions, you may call. Regarding my exam, please feel free to contact me. Dr. Thank you. Schmidt. Thank you. Okay. Um, to further follow up, I did go back and check again. Uh, as far as Puppy Puppy is concerned, we have had no interaction with Puppy Puppy until this incident, since the last hearing date. Um, it did involve the same dogs at that time. So it was the same dog that was previously attacked, was attacked again. Okay. And this is since the hearing? No. No, no. So the 2013 okay, hearing 2013 involved hearing. the same yes. dogs. Okay, yes. Thank you. Six years ago. Yep. Okay. 
Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh, I do. If I, uh, basically, when a dog, two, two officers pet the dog. So you saw the dog up close. And back to the 2013 incident, I drove in a yard, her dog come to my vehicle, started barking, aggravated my dog. I couldn't hold my dog in quick enough, so her dog come up to my vehicle. I paid the bill. I let it go as a dangerous dog. It was a gray area. I didn't contest that. Let it go as you guys hear. It was not like the dog went down there for another jaunt. This dog was not aggressive. The officers pet him. So a dangerous dog you're not going to pet. So it's up to your opinion and your decision. Okay. Oscar. Um, Ms. Judson, can you tell me just very briefly how <laughs> long from the time that you heard something? Can you, just very briefly, how long do you think the attack took? From the time that my dog yelped, I immediately looked out to see what was going on. Um, it was all of maybe six to eight seconds. And then as soon as I saw that, uh, my, I run out of the barn, and my, my daughter's my goddaughter, and my other puppy, and I'm like, we have to, we have to save Casey, and I'm like, well, if they see the puppy, that'll be it. I scoop up the puppy because she's literally two feet from me, shove her in my friend's, uh, my goddaughter's arms, put them in the barn because it's literally five feet from where they were, close the door, and then as I'm going to go back to the corral, my horse comes out of the, the barn and she scared the dogs. And the dogs kind of fell back and twisted and like it startled them. And my dog jumped out of the, through the corral fence and I picked her up and I put her in the barn and I closed everybody in the barn. And I was afraid that the dogs would not come after them. Uh, I only asked the question specifically, Mr. Grilinski asserts that uh, if his dogs had uh, had attacked her dogs, that they, they would be, I think he used the term piles of fur, and as you can hear from Ms. Chudzik, the, the um, attack was very, very brief, fortunately. Mm -hmm. I think if they would have had more time, there would have been a lot of damage done. Okay. Thank you. So our job one more here, question. Oh, hang on. So our job here tonight is to decide whether the puppy puppy should be destroyed or not, because we already decide on um, what's the other dog's name? Um, uh, Darius. 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 Yeah, we did, we designated Darius yes. as a dangerous dog, so we're just talking about puppy puppies here tonight, right? Yes, that's yes. that's one we're talking about. I'm talking about Darius tonight. I'm just talking about the last time. Well, well, the bottom line is, like it says, if you look at the chapter of the laws. If the dogs fight, and it's a proportionate fight, that's legal under those chapters. You read them closely. And my bottom line is, if my dogs want to get rid of her dog, that dog would be history. Those dogs are not aggressive. The cop says it. So the cop isn't 26 pounds. He's probably 180 pounds. Doesn't matter. Aggressive is aggressive. So well, sometimes dogs are aggressive to other animals. But he was not. Your dog not is still so living. Your people. dog is still living. There's no problem. So. Okay. I so, would like to just yeah, brief on yeah. that because I believe the law that Mr. Golinski is referring to uh, are the definitions that are set forth for nuisance and dangerous dog under Chapter 140, Section 136A. Mm -hmm. um, the nuisance dog that I believe Mr. Golinski is more referring to as that definition would be a dog that is a, either excessively barred and causes a disturbance, um, has threatened or attacked livestock. I'm cliff noting here a little bit because it's very long. Um, yeah. Uh, a domestic animal person, but such threat or attack was not grossly disported reaction under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, a dangerous dog uh, is defined as a dog, and I'm going to read the full part here, a dog that either one, without justification, attacks a person or domestic animal causing physical injury or death, two, behaves in a manner that, an that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of physical injury or death to a person or domestic or owned animal. And in this case, what is your recommendation? So, after you review, you went to. So, based on everything, the dogs unsolicited entered the property. Uh, there was that there definitely appeared to be evidence that there was an altercation between the dogs. Uh, the incident happened within a fenced enclosed horse corral. 
Uh, so the dogs not only breached the property barrier of Ms. Trezik's father, but also then entered a fenced area inside of that where this incident occurred. Mm -hmm. um, the dogs then left the property, then returned to the property, at which time Detective Coupion saw them and Sergeant Hartwright was called up and they followed the dogs at that point. Mm -hmm. um, it does not appear I have had interactions with these dogs person on person, especially person on person when, while Mr. Grilinski is present. Uh, I saw no vicious demeanor against them. Uh, based on the evidence from last time and this time, it appears, it would appear to me that this is more of a territorial dispute between dogs and dog, and potentially the dogs were looking at maybe trying to increase their territory, territory or took the dog in territorial threat. So what's, your so what's your recommendation? So my recommendation at this point, um, luckily there was no severe damage done to Ms. Chudzis, uh, Casey. Um, the orders are pretty much complied with uh, given the condition of both dogs. I do not see them scaling out of the six foot hall fence, um, especially based on the way it is created. <coughs> My recommendation would be that within the next several weeks, the roof gets applied to the fence that I spoke to Mr. Erlinski about, so that it's a fully enclosed area. Um, and based on the findings so far, I would deem that we just reaffirm the, the order for Puppy Puppy at this time, with the understanding <coughs> that if this happens again, Puppy Puppy will be taken <coughs> into control custody, and it probably will not be the same outcome. So moved. Second. Okay, so what's the status of Darius? Darius was deemed dangerous last meeting. Okay, I'll peel Darius, not the other one. All those in favor? Uh, can I just oh. 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 before just want to make sure that we that we had uh, the appropriate determination. So the suggestion was for a determination of nuisance dog or no, a dangerous, dangerous dog. dog. We're reaffirming the dangerous dog orders from 2013 for puppy puppy, puppy, puppy with all the same requirements it is set forth with Darius last okay week. and just so that mr. Grilinski is aware the dog cannot leave the property cannot be on, on your own property unrestrained and if, if the dog leaves the property it has to have the muzzle and correct that's what I agree with that with puppy puppy but I'm gonna appeal it for Darius okay. I just so, wanted to make sure we had all the well, we had had yeah. Yeah. I would just like to answer. mention yeah, um, just so you're aware mr. Grilinski uh, the law does allow for a 10-day appeal period uh, we are at day seven right now, based on the findings last week. I'll be down there tomorrow, no problem. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Eddie, you. keep yes. the dog in the cage. <laughs> One's in the truck now. <laughs> Don't have to worry about thieves. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the financial? Yeah, they're not ready. That's not ready. Not ready. Okay. Um, so we can just touch on code of conduct real quick. Uh, I'd just like the board to sign slash vote on this code of conduct just to be accountable to one another and to our own ethics on the board. You know, if we agree to this and violate the code of conduct, it doesn't mean you're immediately kicked off the board or anything along those lines. It's just a representing of being accountable to one another and to the public, um, that type of thing. So right. that's friendly the intention of the, the Code of Conduct. Oh, friendly amendment to the Code it. of Conduct? Yes. Um, and I think it's on, I see which page this is on. It's a section where it talks about, um, it's under the authority and role of the select board. Um, I would like to strike the sentence that begins, um, before any board member approaches a department head or a member of a department or committee, um, he or she shall obtain permission from the town administrator and the um, appropriate select board liaison. Um, I was thinking that maybe we could take that out and perhaps insert a sentence that says um, something along the lines of any time a board member approaches a department head or a member of a department on any matter that relates to da 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 that he or she um, informs the town administrator and or the appropriate select board liaison of said conversation. So that rather than asking for permission, you're just making sure, I mean, 
and it's common courtesy, and I think we all do this anyway. Yeah. But just to let the liaison know, hey, somebody said something to me about, you know, the library or whatever, and I went over and I talked to Patrick, but, you know, I just wanted you to be aware of it. Because I think that seems to work well. I would just yeah. like to make a statement. I don't think that this article or whatever is here is a um, code of conduct. I believe it's just a um, job description of what the select board is. I don't believe it has a, any bearings on code of conduct. I think as uh, elected <coughs> officials, we certainly know what our job is, what is entailed. Um, and we're bound by the state law anyway. That was my question of what is trying to be accomplished by this, because my understanding is we uh, can't enforce it if, if we blatantly violate <coughs> this code of conduct. There's nothing we can do to each other. Uh, the only option people have is what they have now. They can recall us. The state ethics board can do what they see fit if we're violating ethical standards or rules. Investigate us. Yeah, or investigate us. As needed. Or just not reelect us next time we run for election. So yeah. go back to the genesis of the code of conduct. Cause it, it, this was implemented when I was here. Um, this was a recommendation as best practice um, from the Mass Selectmen's Association. And the reason that they strongly encourage not only select boards, but every, every public board to have something along this line <coughs> is that, you know, it's an opportunity to set a culture and, and kind of guide behave, behavior that you want to see. Um, and they were very clear at that point too that, you know, you're right. I mean, it's not, it's, there's no fine associated with this or anything else. It's more how, as a board, we expect um, a public board in the town of Hadley to, to operate. And <coughs> okay. Sure. So that, that's really the reason behind it, and many towns have found themselves in situations where an individual gets elected, they don't do their homework, they don't read Massachusetts general law, they don't go to any training, they just find themselves on a board and they don't necessarily behave appropriately. So um, this was really kind of put together from other existing codes of conduct from other municipalities throughout the states. I mean, this is a very common thing. What was pointed out to me at the time in conversation with um, the woman that had heads up the uh, Selectmen's Association, or at least did at the time, was that in the absence of a code of conduct, when there is a problem, it makes it even that much more difficult to try to have a conversation with a fellow board member about why they should or shouldn't be doing something. So at least here, you know, employees sign codes of conduct when they when they. Um, is part of a normal personnel policy. Probably every company, if any of us who ever have worked for a company, you've signed a code of conduct. And again, it's not legally binding. It's just a way of saying, look, <laughs> this is how we want to operate. This is how we should treat each other. This is how we should interact with the public. Um, and in the absence of it, you're kind of leaving people to their own devices to figure out what that means. So, and everything you said it still stands. I mean, sure, you can be recalled and everything else. So this is more of a, I would call it a, an adoption of a, a culture. Yeah, and that's where I get the accountability that I had is it's being accountable to the public and to the rest of the board that these are our standards. We're agreeing to them, we're signing up to them, we're being accountable for our actions. But I still don't think it's a code of conduct. I think it's no. a job description. No, and we've got it in it's the yellow book is. anyway. So I mean, well, uh, what's it entitled? It's entitled Select Board Operating Procedures. It's yeah. Not a, so it's whatever not it is, I think Chris is just asking us to adopt it. It's it's adopted. It's been in place. I mean, I don't know why we have to even have brought it up again. I know I probably have. I was uncertain if it was something we had to sign on each term and each time we were doing it. If it's something that has already been adopted by the select board. But each and individual has to sign on to it. So anytime you go through an election cycle, there are people who haven't um, kind of affirmed it. So again, it's just like any personnel handbook. You're sworn in by the town clerk. But 
that's that's just, that's just got nothing to do with I it. I can swear you in right now too on you know, we administered an oath yeah. for that hearing. So yeah. I mean that doesn't go through, you know, being uh, accountable. I, I don't support this, but I'll just say here's one of the examples of why um, or it says uh, we shall not make statements or promises of how we will vote on matters that will come before the board until he or she has had an opportunity to hear the pros and cons of the issues at a board meeting. So what you're saying is we can't talk to residents who ask us how do we feel about an issue until we've had an official select board meeting about an issue. We just have to say, oh, sorry, I can't comment on it. That's, that's silliness. <laughs> well, so, so I think what originally Chris had asked was that we all read this and offer comments. So I went through it, and the one thing that struck me was, yeah, asking permission <coughs> probably doesn't make any sense. So I'm asking to have that struck, but I'm not throwing out the whole thing. Yeah. Right? I mean, so if there are other suggestions for editing, I'm fine taking that out. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not in favor of the whole thing. So. Yeah, it's just another layer on top of another layer. <clears throat> okay. Um, I mean, we can make a motion to agree to it, and it can be voted down. Um, or, I mean, I'm open to if you want to have edits, if that's the problem, if there's certain language in there that you strongly disagree to, um, that you're not willing to sign on to, we could delay it to another meeting. Uh, it's it's up to you. But I'd like to take some type of action. If it's voting it down, it's voting it down. I think the board should be held to some standard, and it seems to me that it's just a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I and I think the majority of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts agrees. Why Hadley doesn't feel it needs to be held to a public standard is beyond me. We have that. We have ethics standards from the state. That's about stealing and <laughs> money laundering, and but that's not about screaming at people in public meetings. It's not about making uninformed decisions. I mean, those things are, I mean, it's common sense, so it's sad that you have to put it in writing, but I think if it's common sense, there's nothing wrong with signing off on it if it's in writing. Yeah. Go ahead. Just an observation, but I think it, it might help people understand where they're crossing the line, and some people need it, and some people don't. And this is just a guide. That's all you're agreeing to. Yeah. Okay. Any any motions? Any? Nothing. Um, I'll make you're a motion good. that we um, table it for now, but keep it live and come back to it um, and ask people specifically to either edit what they don't like, um, or if they want to go on record saying that they don't feel there should be any accountability for behavior, that's okay too, but I think we should at least discuss uh, it again. I'll take exception to that uh, characterization of, of not adopting this, <laughs> first of all, but that there's no accountability. There's plenty of accountability, and there's an accountability every single time there's an election, and there's in between, there's the ability to recall uh, any of us and all of us. So. There's plenty of accountability. I read through it. I, that's one of the, your sentence that you struck out is one of the ones I saw that kind of looked odd to me, especially in this what David brought up too was odd. Uh, um, being an employee and being yelled at and screamed at by um, other town employees is 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 a problem. Uh, and it would be nice that there is something written to say, hey guys, you know, common courtesy, please do this. These are our guides. It's not, you do have, unfortunately in this time of age, we do have to have something in writing. I don't think it's well written. I think it needs a lot of critiquing. But um, as an employee, yeah, it would be nice to have something. Okay. Well, I'll especially for an employee that we can say, hey, don't you have something in writing that you shouldn't be doing this? And we can quote it. 
we haven't had that. Yeah, I, I agree. Get right on that HR. <laughs> HR. HR. Yeah, what is the HR involved in? Like, what is the HR that could be? Yeah. The yeah. town handbook. Uh, mm -hmm. That could be there. Yeah. Maybe that needs to be revisited also. But I don't know. Yeah, I, there has well, to be something. Th this belong, mm -hmm. It's in the hand. Most all of this is in the handbook. Anyway. But but you sign a handbook, John. You're an employee. You're an employee. Yeah. We're talking about boards, mm -hmm. revolving boards where the names and faces change year over year. But we we but abide by the, we abide by the same laws it's that the employees the do. I mean. All right. Let's table yeah. it. This yeah, is we, enough we'll table it for now. Tonight. I would like to. I'll second that table on it. To, uh, so I guess all those in favor of tabling it. Aye. No. Aye. <laughs> no. Did you say no, John? No, no said I said, said no. He said no. I said no. Christian said no. Said no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yay, nay. All right. And then we can go into financial transfer is not ready. Senior center, library, and fire substation updates. Um, I have nothing tonight. Open bids, I think, next week on the 21st for sub contractors on the uh, fire station. Okay. Uh, library building committee is meeting right now, or they may be over with the meeting. Um, they were reviewing the sub bids uh, that came in, and uh, I did, obviously, David and I are on the committee, we're not there for the discussion, but um, I can say that at least from, the, from a sub bidding standpoint that they're some were a little bit higher than we expected and some were a little bit lower but they're relatively in line and i'm sure that there's a lot of conversation going on over there so okay no huge surprises is the good news that's good would or you agree with that from the email i didn't see the email yet so. oh okay all right <laughs> i can't agree yeah, with it. all right <laughs> the apparent low bids for the sub bids were about 1.9 million dollars out of the 7.6 million dollar project so that looks encouraging yeah and that was the phil o'brien's assessment was he thought it we're in pretty good shape there was one thing on fox sub fire we needed those documents from the plan board i have reminded mr dwyer to his face at least three times this week that we need those documents we wanted to use it for our bid documents yep on the senior center we're well underway with construction. We're going to have the groundbreaking on June 4th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, tonight we're hoping to sign a change order for the senior center roof going to a metal roof as opposed to shingle roof. Um, we've got a 30-year warranty on the roof for water tightness, 35-year uh, finish guarantee. Jane, is there anything else you want to add to nope. that? Any other updates? Moving along, it's kind of exciting. So okay. moved. So my only oh, second for discussion. Okay. Uh, my only question is for the roof. I noticed that initially there was a line item for almost five thousand dollars for the twenty-year water tightness warranty, and that disappeared in this most recent one. So was that uh, someone had to come to Jesus uh, moment? <laughs> with their, uh, no, it's still, <laughs> it's still in uh, the schedule. Uh, not the one I, I have it on the schedule of values. Yeah. On the last, I think the schedule of values, last page, thirty-year water tightness, four thousand nine hundred twelve dollars, which was the same as the twenty-year water tightness. Oh, it's on the second page. Mm -hmm. Well, they came in in different orders for you. No, I'm just saying, from what David was looking at, he was looking at page one, and it's oh, not yeah, in it's there. Not there. Yeah, so that's it's actually on the, the second uh, page. Total mm -hmm. amount. So it would be the change order amount is $256,841.45, mm -hmm. which is within our budget right now. Okay. What are you looking at? I'm just looking to see where. I, I May I give you this? Or do you have a printout? I was going to print it out. Yeah, I think so. It missed the right hand margin, but you can see it's here. Okay. No, I guess, yeah, that one. So keep going. One more page. No, that's weird. Oh, right. Are you in the one in board docs? Oh, or third page. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, I mean, my only question is, uh, I guess, why we're paying for a warranty when most of these are included in the, uh, I mean, I, I said it before, I'm in the process of doing a steel building myself, an all steel building with a steel metal roof, and uh, it, these, these warranties are typically included. Maybe they chose to break it out rather than include it in the price, but that was my only concern about, about this. I know it's only only $5,000, but, you know. The 35-year warranty on the finish is much better than what we had initially, so I'm happy with that. I'm, yeah. okay, I'm okay with that. <coughs> yeah, I see what you mean, the $4,912. Yeah, it's almost like you're buying an insurance policy for the water rather yeah. than getting an included warranty. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I know there are different options on these things. I don't know how different people break down their quotes. And maybe it's just this manufacturer, that's the way they do things, or this installer, I don't know. But and I didn't know if that was something they do at. I mean, Tim, from uh, your experience, I mean, do you typically see them included in a price or included in you know, as a warranty, or is it a separate line item, or a little bit of everything? Well, I know a commercial you can re request different warranties. Mm -hmm. and I don't ever recall it being split out on any of our other roofs. Right. So Police and fire station. And, and no, that, it wasn't. That was all. And that was the one that was the most expensive. And the highway garage. Mm -hmm. But I don't recall it being a separate I line item. But it could very well be based on the contract requirements that they had to uh, have it separate. We haven't seen our sub bits yet anyway on the roof either, so. I don't know, I'll just look to see how that comes out for metal roofing. Well, we have a, uh, a motion and a second, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess all those in favor of doing that. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. It's going to last a little longer than any asphalt roof. I just want to make a comment that I, I think we just, I favor the metal roof, but until we look into these additional charges that we're incurring, it's kind of like with the uh, the drain pipe last week. Until you know, you look into the details and see, yeah, we're looking digging up 60 feet of drain pipe. Okay, that makes sense for the six grand that we we're paying. But um, you know, here's five thousand that maybe we could have saved if we have, had checked into it a little bit further. So that's all. I favor the metal roof. I think mm -hmm. it's a good thing for the town in the, end of the long run. All right. Um, Real quickly, David, I don't know if town administrator report. Sure. Uh, just go through it quickly. I think there was something on there that we need to vote on. Is that? Yeah, there was, so this, I'll just very briefly, uh, because the hour is late, um, <clears throat> classification plan study. I sat down with Don Jacobs today and we we'll run through numbers. Those numbers are still in the process, but uh, we're getting very close to completing that uh, project. Um, senior center, we just did the roof, library construction, just did the sub bid opening. Um, North Hadley Village Hall sale, okay, so we placed a non-binding referendum concerning the demolition of North Hadley Village Hall. That will be on the June 18th ballot. Um, and uh, we talked to the realtor and she said that the value of the hall without the land is $299,000. So did the board have any questions on that, uh, on that particular project? Is there a way to, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm, I'm torn whether we should tear it down and keep the land or sell it and kind of just keep the, the ball field. <coughs> so. I mean, what are, our, what are our options, I guess, as far as... Um, Let's can see we, if we can sell it. Yeah, can we put it up for sale? And give it a time limit? And, yeah, and then wait to find... I don't know if we could wait to finalize the sale until we get that referendum back, that non buying Maybe people want to see it torn down rather than... So, I don't know. Yeah. You're meeting on June 19th with the, uh, the planning board for strategic planning, so we can take a look at the results of the ballot and then decide what steps we need to take in order to uh, move this either to sale or um, bring it uh, to uh, another place. Like no, it's really only a couple weeks away now, so three I weeks away. I'll make a motion that we uh, put up a 
for sale signed ASAP and see what we can get in the meantime. Then. All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again. <laughs> All right. How many times is this? Again. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. All right. And we know that we have three in, uh, potential interested parties on the on the property. Yeah. So there's a possibility there. Hockenham Cemetery marker restoration update uh, is a change order which you just approved. Um, we received the Acuity Technologies report on Monday and they uh, identified areas where first of all they thought it was awesome that the town had a five-year uh, technology plan and that we're actually following it. Uh, the, the guy said, I wish our, my town was doing this, so I sent him the copy of the RFPs. And they said, in general, we're in pretty good shape. They did uh, identify certain areas where we can improve, uh, some of which we've uh, worked with Northeast IT in order to take those steps to, to implement the improvement, but the others are lining up for the next round of IT funding through the grant program this summer. Um, the FEMA flood insurance mapping project, uh, the state floodplain manager for the Commonwealth visited Hadley on May 28th to, to uh, help compliance with the National Flood Insurance Pol Program and we'll get a, the right department heads in the, in the room for that and the, there'll be a memo that goes around to him on that one. Just going through things that we've already touched upon. Uh, coming town actions and community events. Uh, May 18th, the Strawberry and Asparagus Supper. May 24th, we learned about the library fundraiser. May 26th, the Memorial Day Parade. And I just wanted to stop and ask the board. Uh, they're having difficulties finding buses for the parade, for the, the, the circuit to the cemeteries. They have one bus for the uh, for the, the band, that's all set. But they need two additional buses and they were wondering if the, the town would allow the other two buses to be used for that day for that uh, purpose with volunteer uh, drivers. And I said I'd bring it to the board and find out if that's something that the board would be willing to do. I'll make a motion to allow the use of We've what, done it two buses hours or three way. buses. Let's give them three buses if they need it. It benefits the whole town. So. All right, thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Asparagus Festival on June 1st, and then the debt exclusion election on June 18th. And we meet at the, all those participating, all boards are welcome to join us. Um, we will be meeting around 10.30, quarter of 11 at the Legion mm -hmm. to make the rounds to the cemetery if you want to do that. Otherwise, it's the parade itself at two, two. so come at one to line up. As long as it don't want you do you want to fly over day? As long as it doesn't rain. <laughs> Any other? It's going uh, to airdrop in. It's going to be a do drop. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements? Um, we skipped the financial transfer one. That no, one we took off. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'm Chris uh, Yes. Um, do you want to? point out that the Legion requested we not do our work until after Memorial Day, and we agreed. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, you so can say. The, the Legion, the, we're bringing up an electric line for the Senior Center, the Legion requested we wait until after Memorial Day to start digging up their lot, and we agreed to that. Great. Thank you. Good point. Okay. Just out of curiosity, where is the uh, parade lining up this year? East Street. East Street. East Street. North or South? North. East Street. North side of East Street and public safety complex if needed for overflow. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Let's hope. Let's hope it's out. To one side. Yeah. One side. Um, okay. I, I have two Go ahead. announcements. Um, the passing of Kim Naval Johnson. Um, she was originally from Hadley. And uh, to her family, our condolences. And to Pat Shandry who was our town accountant here at one time. She just passed also. So condolences to Pat's family also. And I just wanted to send our condolences to Dorothy Fredera, who was uh, worked 
a town hall senior tax work off program and thank her for her service to the town and our condolences to her family. And then I just have Memorial Day, 526, May 26th, and the uh, Senior Center groundbreaking June 4th, uh, 1 p.m. Are we all, I'm gonna take time off to come. Yeah, I'm planning on being there. You can take time off. Anyone else? Oh, you can. Mm. <laughs> you should shake his head. Well, I know. <laughs> Anybody else, any other announcements? I wanna be over there. Okay. I hear that. Okay. So uh, the select board will convene in an ex executive session as per provisions of MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against the public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. Uh, building inspector. Do we? Does the clerk chair, say? Do I say? That's okay. Any one of us could say that, but then you have to say, as chair, I okay. declare. As, I, I'm not sure. Hold on. I can. I don't is there? That. We'll convene to. Yeah, I thought Jennifer would put that out there. Yeah, it's not on there. Oh, okay. I have something here with it written down. It yeah. was written on one of the months, but I don't know yeah, which one it was. Thought, yeah, and she dropped oh, it. I thought they just carried it over every day. Yeah. 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 Not to reconvene into whatever. Yeah, open session. Having the uh, discussion in open session could be detrimental yeah. to the. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, you guys are all saying it, and I'm not getting it. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's been said so, so, so said. Okay. Yeah, I have to get that written down, so I have that in front of me next time. Make a motion. Make a motion to, to go, go into the executive session. session. Mm -hmm. Roll call vote. Yes. Phil? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Charlotte? Yes. We're in the executive session. Good night, everybody. Night.